everything about that Shannon's competition and thanks to our great mates at Shannon's and we're actually here at Shannon's Race Central to answer a critical question. This is the 19th year of the Clipsal 500. You and I were here from day dot, yep. you as a driver, me talking about you as a driver um, and you try to unlock the key on what it is to make a winning start here and I guess it comes down to three things, car, driver and team. So what have they got to do? Well it's not just the winning start, it's the winning strategy, it's the winning everything. It's a very unique event isn't it Matt, particularly to start off the year. So first some things that are specific to the car we've got to bring you. What are the, some of the issues? First of all, you've got to consider the track grip. Well, if you look at our car, I'd call this track probably about in the medium plus type area, so not such a big issue. Curb and bumps, well, they're off the scale. You've got to bring a car here that is really, really good on the curbs. You've got to use the curbs, and it's very bumpy because it's a street circuit. That's all about the shock absorber. Tire degradation, well, here's about 0.3. Look down the bottom there which isn't too much of a drama. But we get into some of the other aspects. Engine. Now, it goes without saying, every event, engine is critically important. But when we come to Adelaide, you've got to drag a tonne and a half of car, when it's full of fuel, off a lot of the slow corners up to a high speed. That, of course, requires engine. But usually that is determined by the limit of adhesion you have because your tyres are gone. So it's not so much about engine as what we would think. So I would say medium. Aero, this for me is a really tough one. If I show you here the average speed of a lot of the circuits we go to, Bathurst right up here at 176, you can see. Uh, Mid-corner average speed, 150. Clipsal is way back here. But the problem is, if you took into account turn eight, that really fast corner, the average speed would be right up here. So teams are really conflicted because the aero influence on the car, if I drag it along here, maybe I won't, yeah, there you go. There you go is actually really high off the scale at turn eight but for the rest of the circuit it's really actually low because the corners are so slow very hard to sort your car out in that circumstance so as matt alluded to what are some of the things you need to do to be able to win at this event what have you got to bring here well let's go through a few of them firstly with the car you need the car to turn. Now that sounds obvious. In our game, what turn means is point. The ability to get into the corner when you first crack the steering wheel. Right here, watch Shane Van Giesbergen, right at this point. Now, those little 90 degree corners over the back, four, five, six, seven, very important that your car turns well. If the car doesn't turn well in the first instance, you can forget if it puts its power down well or not. It just doesn't matter. Then if we get to the next one, You've got to be brave. Don't think you can be a race driver here at this circuit without being brave. This is, of probably any corner in the country, the one where you need to be bravest. It's the one that takes its toll, most damage of anywhere we go. Hundreds of thousands of dollars done every year. I mean, you really need to have them strapped on at this particular event to do well here. You need fuel efficiency. Although there's a minimum fuel drop, and I'm going to explain a bit more about this tomorrow, you still need fuel efficiency. Why? Because it opens up your fuel window. And if you get to that critical lap, remember, that's the earliest in the race. If there's a safety car, something happens, you've got to dive in and fill up to make it all the way home. If you've got better fuel efficiency, that window might just open up another couple of laps. Really critical. OK, next thing you bring along here is you need to have strategy smarts. The awful circumstances we see happen so often of the double stack, where both cars come in on a safety car, stack one behind the other, and the day is over for the second car. You've got to strategize yourself around that. You've got to have a different strategy, basically, for each of your cars, which is very, very hard to do. Easier said than done. High fitness goes without saying, but extraordinarily important here. Look at Scotty McLaughlin. In fact, I've never seen him look this fit, so that tells me heaps. You don't have match fitness when you arrive here for what is arguably our hardest event, physically, and it's after our Christmas break. So that makes it particularly hard. So a lot of training in the off-season, fitness needs to be a peak. Heat management, that's both in the car and the driver. We know dehydration causes mistakes. And tomorrow, probably more than today, because it's very hard to recover tonight after losing so much sweat through the race today. These guys will be soaked and had it. By tomorrow afternoon, make no mistake, they will be making mistakes themselves. OK, you need mechanical sympathy. What's mechanical sympathy? Basically, mechanical sympathy is the ability to manage the car during the day without breaking it. Some drivers are really good at it. Some drivers are not good on it. Some drivers reef on the gearbox really hard, damage gearbox.
gearboxes. Other guys belt curves really hard, damage the aero. And they're not necessarily things that will put you out of the race. But damaging your aero kit, for example, might make you a little bit slower through turn, out for the, turn eight for the rest of the day. Damaging your steering by hitting a curb too hard might just knock your steering out, make you slow for the rest of the day. Very, very important. And then finally, you've got to bring a level of maturity here. You've got to bring a level of wisdom here to be able to deal with all this stuff. But more so, when you're in the race, you've got to be able to sometimes resist the temptation to try and win that little battle, and you've got to think about winning the war. And when you actually have a look at the guys that win this race, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yes, Nick Perkett won last year, and he's probably the standout, but that was because there was a whole drama with rain and everything happening. But when you really look at the trend of who wins this race, Look at the guys that win it. They're all actually champions. Look at all these names here. So that, for me, says it all. And I don't think anything's going to change today. This is a tough, tough race. And why it's so important, it sets the, the pillar or the foundation for the rest of the year. And if you don't get this one right, you make rounds two, three, four, five and six that much harder. So you need a good dose of that. Matty? Well done, Marco. Incredible atmosphere out here. It's about 32 degrees at the moment, but in the skies above us, squadron leader Rob Graham is piloting the Hawk 127 out of 79 squadron at Pierce, which is just outside of Perth. So I probably took him about a couple of minutes to get here, but he's putting on a real show. One of the things that I've noticed with the drivers in pit lane, as you touched on, Marco, is that it's water bottles, water bottles, water bottles. Today is a tough day. 250 k's coming their way. The first race of the season for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. This is the Pixel 500. Enjoy it as we hand you over to our series commentators, headed up by Mark Scaife and Neil Crompton. Go, 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 go. In 2017, who's your favourite? Who's going to be the villain? What will be that moment? Who will push the limits? Who will push them too far? Oh, no, you're all gone! Where will the big story be? Who will win at the mountain? Who will take home the championship? Who knows? 14 different destinations, 6,320 kilometres of racing, and a pit lane ready to rumble. That is an amazing move! The Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. It's time to get your heart racing. We are in South Australia, known for its festivals and events, world-famous wide regions, restaurants, bars and beaches, gourmet food and wine, and premium motorsport. We've got a great affinity in this town with motorsport. It dates back to 1985 with Formula One, and since 1999, supercars have dazzled us over the years at this location. Special show overhead at the moment as well, thanks to the Air Force and Squadron Leader Rob Graham from 79 Squadron has come across from RAAF Pierce, very close to Barbagello Raceway in Western Australia, where we will be later in this championship season. It's good for 555 knots, that machine. And they also train on that machine at Williamtown, and we will be there later in the year at Newcastle. Flycam shows us precisely what our grid looks like. And this is what our track looks like this afternoon. Adelaide Parkland Circuit on the Virgin Australia destination board. Let's look at it in detail. It's 14 turns, 3.2 kilometres and a fantastic racetrack with all the characteristics that you want. There's opportunities to pass, there's bumps, there's big curbs, there's concrete walls. It requires serious commitment. There's three or four good opportunities to pass. It's complex up here between turns four, five, six and seven and a momentary rest about 500 metres in a straight line and the fast right-hander at turn eight. Minimum speed about 225 kilometres an hour. A premium requirement for braking performance into turn nine and then this complex run through the back of the pit paddock area takes you to turn 14. Little rest again on the pit straight takes you down to the chicane into turn number one. It's quite hard on brakes. It's reasonably hard on tyres. It is very hard on suspension. In these warm conditions that are expected to reach the low to medium 30s today, it's going to be very hard on drivers as well. 
And Crompo, on that note, keeping cool on the grid is super important. So I'm with the 2012 Clipsal 500 champion, Will Davis, and this towel is soaked with water. How hot is this? Uh, well, it's going to be hot, Rusty. So uh, trying to just pre-cool, you know, sitting here in the sun now, been in the uh, ice bath already. That was set to 12 degrees. Uh, just trying to keep the core temp down, you know, as much as you can, because it's going to be a brutal 78 laps. OK, you're out of grid 17 today. You've been working with a new engineer in Campbell Little, and even as you rolled up to the grid here, you were working through some stuff on the steering wheel. Have you got a couple of little niggling complications? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. New, new engineer, new data engineer this year. So, uh, yeah, we've got some new stuff in the dash and some new programs. And it's a bit finicky getting all these systems working, you know. So you have certain pages for the start and, and whatnot. So, no, we had a niggling little issue that uh, wasn't going to the right page that I need. So uh, it shouldn't be a huge drama. They'll just have to plug the computer in and uh, get on top of it. But, yeah, usual stuff. Start of a long year. And start of an exciting year for us. Woodstock's on the car. It looks awesome. Um, don't want to be off 17, but I don't plan on being here for long. Try and keep cool for now, mate, and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Rusty. Cheers. Mark Winterbottom, we're about to head into the first race of season 2017, but you just look very cool, calm, collected, having a bit of fun with your son, your family here. Is that really how you're feeling? Yeah, oh, there's, there's adrenaline and nerves and all that sort of stuff going on, but um, yeah, the best thing to, to keep you calm is your, what you normally do day to day. So, um, yeah, Austin's having fun drinking my water and squirting me with it and uh, having a good time, but it's going to be hot out there. It's going to be a uh, pretty hot race, but, um, but yeah, win, lose or draw, give it your best shot. And as long as these little fellas are proud of you, it's, uh, it's all good. Uh, you're starting from a very nice position for this first race of the season. Have, are you confident you've got good, solid race pace in the car? considering we're a little bit of an unknown with this tyre. Yeah, it is. It's unknown. Um, you know, you'll see guys pit early, which will get a big gain if it pays off. But the risk is um, just knowing what that tyre is going to do. And once you pit early, you've used your safety buffer. So I'm not sure which way we'll take it. We'll, we'll fall into the race, see how we go. But um, yeah, I, I'm not sure about our race pace. We've just got to work it out. But who cares about race pace? My little boy's a good looking little dude. He's on TV, so it's all good. Thanks, Rusty. Good luck. Cheers, stuff. And in the off-season, Dale Woods made the shift down to Erebus Motorsport, mate. Uh, how's everything transitioning with you? And uh, you, you two, you and David Reynolds, I mean, how's that relationship working out? Two weirdos. Yeah, two complete weirdos. That was, uh, <laughs> that was never I mean gonna... that really nicely. <laughs> I don't. Um, that was never going to be a problem, really. Dave and I get on well. We have for a long time, so I don't see that changing. He's a... Uh... He's a legend and, uh, and a very fast peddler, so it's uh, nice. I've done this before. I mean, I've changed teams, but found a uh, place I'm really happy with at the moment. Betty creates a really nice environment and a very small, tight-knit uh, group of people and enjoying that. So just got to uh, now knuckle down and get the results on the board and do a jo good job in the car because uh, they're, they're really good cars. It's, uh, can tell that the potential's there. Just got to do the job in it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is we've talked to many drivers. We've had a lot of changes in the off-season. You're one of those guys, and it's adapting to a different car, a different style, a different way of doing things in a team. Now, the differences between the, you know, where you were at the, in the Nissan with the, in the Ultima to where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. There's big differences, but um, I mean, you say big differences. Fundamentally, they're all similar underneath. But this category is um, the field is split by nothing, so it doesn't take much to. Uh, to, you know, just alter those things that you've got to change, change in your driving, and then just come to understand with a new car. But it'll be fine. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. It's a good place. Get out there, mate. Have some fun. Thanks very much. Just... Chaz Mostert, I'm not sure if I can take you quite seriously here, sitting very straight-faced, uh, getting as much cool air as you possibly can. Yeah, it's going to be a big race. It's uh, first time 250s come back on a Saturday. We know how buggered we all feel on Sunday night after 250, so it's, uh, it's important now to take the preparations to, to give it our best shot today and uh, obviously bounce back for tomorrow as well. So, yeah, definitely cooling off here. We're very lucky to have this cool aircon unit, um, plenty of fluids in and, and a bit of an ice bath after, hopefully, and uh, we'll see how we pull up for tomorrow. Just physically, have you completely recovered from your injury? Yeah, physically fine in the car. So, um, yeah, the hardest thing in the car is just the temperature. It's simple as that. Not the, not, not, nothing to do with my leg or anything like that. So it's, um, yeah, today is just about trying to cool off. Thanks, Chaz. Wish you all the best. Thank you. So last year's Clipsal 500 champion standing here uh, on Grid 11, Nick Perkett. Mate, car's looking fantastic. You look pretty good. And you ready for this? I am. It's... These things are crazy. Um, I'm loving every minute so far of uh, joining BJR. For me, made a little mistake in qualifying, which cost us probably three or four rows, which happens. It's um, you know it's the first time in two years where I've had that, you know, a little bit of pressure to be able to, you know, it's up to the driver to make sure it's there, and it's um, it's refreshing, and I'm loving it. But uh, you know, so welcoming the whole crew, and to have Clipsal inside the car for this event, just you know, farewell Clipsal 500. It's pretty special, as I've been to every single one of these 
be it a spectator or driver, so really cool. Good on you, mate. We'll have a great day out there and uh, move the thing forward, eh? I shall try. Thank you. Ours is one of the most aspirational sports on the planet. How'd you like to be 16 years of age and jumping on the grid to contest a supercars race? You're about to launch Alex Rullo into the championship for the first time. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm obviously keen to get sightings. So uh, it's a big challenge ahead, but uh, yeah, ready to kickstart it here at Clipsal. And uh, yeah, should be a good race. I know your your method, your plan for the week was to come into this. Just just no mistakes, just nail it, mate. I know you're at the back of the grid, but thus far you've stuck to the, the schedule, haven't you? Yeah, we just want to get through the weekend so uh yeah only had a minor incident in practice but uh it's one of those things that happen so uh yeah hopefully we get through the race and uh yeah that's the plan just to get to the end no scratches and uh yeah i think the results will come later in the year but yeah still learning and uh still just trying to trying to keep on to the back of these guys you all set fitness wise for this you've got the, the cool suit the cool vest on at the moment 250 grueling k's around here to come and there's just no break is there yeah there's there's no break here at clipsal you know you haven't got a long straight like at bathurst where i did a 250k race last year so uh and obviously the heat as well so It'll be a tough one, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, looking forward to the challenge and, uh, yeah, rough intro. Lots of young fans would be envious, mate. Go and enjoy. Cheers. Back in the Hino Hub again for 2017 for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship to analyse the race that's coming up. Let's first of all have a look at some of our facts here and do something of a history lesson. We've been coming to this place with supercars since back in 1999. Next year's going to be a big party, our 20th year here in Adelaide. Remember, Formula One dates back to 1985. More wins for Jamie Wincup. Four Clipsal 500 overall victories and ten race wins. Incredible run. And he's finished 100% of all the races he won here last year our 2016 winners amazing that he's been able to achieve that we've had a whole variety of people that have stood on the top step here remember last year was three races this year we've got a two race format so our race facts 250 clicks 78 laps our brand new fuel used around about 215 litres. Our fuel drop, however, which requires that we actually drop this fuel into the car by rules, is a problem because it doesn't fit. You've got a 110 litre usable fuel tank in these cars and of course those figures don't go together. So you've got to stop at least twice, maybe three times. Using around about two and three quarter litres per lap, sometimes around about 2.8. It varies from car to car, team to team, driver to driver. Therefore, our starting fuel is around about 75 litres, so about three-quarters of a tank or thereabouts. It'll give you a fuel range of 40-odd laps, and it's shorter to begin with because you've got to get the cars out onto the grid. Critical lap, this is where you fuel the car up to get you home. We'll talk a lot about this. It's lap number 38. So our considerations, it's been stinking hot all week, particularly in the early part of the week, and that takes its toll on physical fitness. The drivers will feel it. doesn't matter how much you train, and they've been working hard on this for the last 90 odd days being in the car is totally different they will feel the pain today this will be a factor we've got brand new tires in 2017 we don't entirely know and understand the characteristics of the tire we'll keep an eye on that one bit of a question mark you're always going to see the safety car here you can just about set the clock by it very high prob 83 percent and you've got to watch double stacking it's a given another thing just to keep in mind is going back to that three-stop comment that i made before and i'll talk a bit about that now as we understand fuel so first of all these are litres and these are laps. Let's look at our red strategy. So starting with 75 and at the first available opportunity, jumping in here, chucking some fuel in and a long run to the critical lap. Long run, tyres, you're going to have to watch that very carefully. Gas are up again, fill it to the end and home you go. This is one that I don't think we're going to see a lot of. This is the standard strategy, so I'm not going to waste a lot of breath on this. Let's talk about the even tyre strategy because it's really red and green that matters. 75 litres, run it out to about lap 26, bring it back to around about that 75 litre mark, run it to 52 and down to the end. Now, just keep in the back of your mind, and I'll go back to red to show it, somebody, depending on safety car intervention, might try a three-stopper because they've got to drop their 140 litres. They've got a bit of flexibility today with what they do to fuel. Keep an eye on it. But one way or another, I can promise you, this is going to be a scorcher. Buckle up and enjoy. Awesome shot from the Red Rooster chopper cam from right above the starting grid. 26 cars, 25 gentlemen, one lady out there. What a star-studded field. 2004, Eastern Creek, the last time that Garth Tander raced for the Gary Rogers Motorsport team. You're back in their colours and in their car again for season 2017. How are you feeling? Yeah, looking forward to it, Rusty. Certainly didn't qualify where we would like to, but the amount of work this team's done just to get the cars here ready for this weekend is huge. So, um, 
Probably as good as we could have done qualifying yesterday. We'll try and go forward in the race today. All right, what's the what's the play? 250 Ks to come with all that stuff you've just detailed. How are you going to tackle it? Try not to melt. <laughs> Thank you. Mate, JC, James Courtney sitting there on third on the grid. Pretty good effort in the in the shootout, mate. Uh, what's your thoughts on how this car is going to take those long stints now? No one really knows. Yeah, that's right, mate. Uh, no one really knows. In the shootout, I was probably a little too relaxed. I didn't really attack. I just wanted a good clean lap, good starting position. So, at least with us in this this position, we are, we can react to the other guys with what they're doing with strategy. So, look, I think it's going to be great. It's going to be interesting. And uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah, if there's a first lap safety car, it could be a long afternoon. If there's anything like last year, mate, it will be interesting. Good luck. Cheers, guys. Mark, I made the point that uh, the temperature and the physicality of what's going to happen today is a big deal. It's massive. And for the first event of the year, we've spoken about fitness. But in reality, fitness is all about match fitness in the car today, Neil. This is going to be very tough. Beautiful scenes looking down from above. And... I want to take you back to last year, Scapey, because James Courtney absolutely thrilled us on Saturday in that battle with Jamie Wincup. Today, he's our GoPro hot lap pilot. He takes us for a blast in the Mobile HSV Racing Commodore. Oh, g'day, everyone at home. You're on board the 22 with JC. Clipsal, best race of the year for me, and you're on board with me for the GoPro lap. Amazing place. And yet here, the atmosphere is crazy. Up into one... Down one gear, so easy to lock the front, bit like I just did there, who used too much curb. Car gets pretty lively through there, trying to keep it flat. Up into four, hard on the brakes. Back to second. Up and over the curb, trying to get that 680 of horsepower to the ground gear. It's pretty tough, she wants to get a bit tail happy up through five, into six. Important seven right here is to get the nose in and get the thing rotated enough to get hard on the gas. Coming up to one of the craziest corners in Australian motorsport here. I think it's actually the highest minimum speed. Turn eight, 120 k, 220 k's, and you're off and back on it. It's out to the wall, crazy. A lot of passing down into nine in the race here. Some guys use first. Maybe second, looks after the tyre a little better, I think. Up around through 9, 10, 11 and 12 here. Easy out. Whoop. May have kissed the wall a little. Really important. Second last corner. Setting yourself up for a, a lunge on the last lap if you have to. Get the nose in again. All that power down. Best moment of the year, coming over the line here when you've won. I've managed to do it a couple of times. Let's hope we go it again this year. Thanks, everyone. Great to be a backseat driver there with James Courtney and gives you an understanding of how busy this racetrack is. There is absolutely no time to rest. And that's the fly cam view, thanks to South Australia, our host this weekend of what our starting grid looks like. 26 cars high level of intensity through qualifying yesterday where the cars were separated at the top end of town by one ten thousandth of a second and then an awesome shootout today and it's set up what I think is going to be a big battle for 2017 between the Red Bull Holt Racing Team and Shell Helix Racing. Our Triple M starting grid for 2017. Let's have a look at the way in which they will line up and this is a great lineup. Van Gisbergen versus Coulthard. Awesome performance. Mostert and Courtney, we just did a lap with James, he'll start on row number two, then it's Winterbottom and McLaughlin, cars five and 17. Scotty didn't quite get that lap right in the shootout, then Winkup and Kelly, 88 and 15 alongside each other. Cam Waters did a nice job in the shootout together with David Reynolds in the Penride entry. Nick Perkat, last year's Clipsal 500 champion with Tim Slade alongside him, both Adelaide boys. Then Craig Lowndes and Michael Caruso, Triple Eight and car 23. Big news story handed to the Holden team of Gary Rogers together with Todd Kelly. Then it's Will Davison and Scotty Pye. Looking further back to row number 10, James Moffat and Lee Holdsworth, positions 19 and 20. Out of 21 and 22, Dale Wood and Jason Bright. Both those drivers have been on the move in the new season. Tim Blanchard stays with Team Cool Drive and Brad Jones. Simona Di Silvestro lines up for a third supercar race. And then Tad, Taz Douglas, I beg your pardon, drafted in at the last moment with Lucas Dumbrell together with Alex Rulo, who will now start a supercar race as the youngest ever driver in the history of the competition. And I've never seen Shane Van Gisbergen so animated after that.
top 10 shootout. It was a superb lap. Conversely, Scotty McLaughlin lost six tenths per second in the final sector. That damaged his qualifying performance. And to Rick Kelly, and he's been fast all weekend. Very, very good to see those Altimers showing real potential on the new tyre, especially in Fabian Coulthard. I reckon starting off the front row on the left-hand side yeah. is actually an advantage into turn one. He's on the inside for the first corner. Yeah, there's something about having a tonne and a half on your side when you run down to that side of the racetrack, left-hand turn at turn one. And remember that McLaughlin's just down the order slot that we saw him very close to Van Gisbergen earlier in the weekend, so he's got a quick car, so we need to watch him trying to thread here as well. All of the surroundings and the off-track activation here has been fantastic all week. Let's get to Rusty to build this up. Crompo, I was lucky enough to be here for the first ever Clipsal 500 in 1999. The atmosphere was phenomenal. That year, Craig Lowndes won from the back of the grid and the place erupted and it's going to go off again today. The very best drivers in the world, some of the best engineering excellence and as far as fans are concerned, the most passionate. What do you reckon? Who's excited about the championship? Let's get the championship underway. 2017 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship will be travelling throughout Australia, north, south, east and west, every state and to the Northern Territory. Plus, we journey across the Tasman to New Zealand. Last year, 11 different winners and the promise of another tight, tough season. The supercar heavyweights are back. 6,320 racing kilometres this season. And it's time now for the first 250 okay, kilometre instalment, Adelaide style. Okay, two, Cars coming into position. Two, one, and What's in store? There will be tears. There will be cheers. Get ready for nine months of high course supercars action. That was out of control. Courtney got the best jump of the first three cars. Fabian Coulthard almost stalled. And Mark Winterbottom and Chas Mostert made contact in the run down to turn one. That was wild. And Van Gisbergen, a big braking manoeuvre to hold the lead because he probably should have been passed on the inside by Fabian. So three abreast on the way in there. Wing Cup after his worst qualifying for Triple Eight puts a 500 and Fabian's got him. Great move. That was well planned and executed, and he's got right of way here. There's an agreement between the drivers based on the briefing notes on how they deal with turn eight when they run down their side by side. Cool tart, cool move. That was a nice trouble. maneuver. There's trouble at the back of the pack, big trouble. And I think it's Will Davison in the Woodstock entry. He's made contact down there, heavy contact, and that car's got big damage. So we were focused on the leaders. Here's Will. What a disappointing start. It's a margin now in favour of Coulthard. So an awkward run out of turn seven for Van Gisbergen, who rotated on that corner yesterday. And we've got Wink up in the pit lane. So think of the red strategy in the Hino hub. They're dumping the first load of fuel for Wink Cup because he didn't qualify well. He doesn't have track position. They're playing a strategy game. Okay, mate, we've got to, this will be a really quick stop for you only. On the mark for us, please. Thank you. This will clear, clear him from traffic. Still clear. Track position is king around the streets of Adelaide. Still clear, mate. And Coulthard's bolted. Still only clear to go. Clear to go. Almost a second clear now of Van Gisbergen. So that was a very healthy manoeuvre coming out of Turn 7. Great run up to Turn 8. Proper respect between the two Kiwis on the way into Turn 8, following those guidelines. Isn't it wonderful to soak that up? Those supercars through turn eight, and there's the stricken Commodore of Will Davison making it into the lane with the damage in the front left corner of that car. I was looking at the other end of the field, but I presume that's contact with the wall at turn eight. So this is a crazy margin. One and a half seconds, Fabian over Shane at the moment. Ford versus Holden. Wincup is the first to take an early stop. 
So they've dumped their fuel. As you pointed out, Mark, that now gives him clear track. He'll make a good gain out of the fact that he doesn't have to race others. Curb cam, and now let's have a look at the replay at the start. The conversion for Van Gisbergen was excellent. The car sat, squatted, and bolted. Courtney made a blinder, but ended up on the wrong side of the road. Had to surf across the top of the curb. There was a lot of jostling going on here. Now let's ride with Mostert. And Coulthard had to have a second snap at the clutch. And look at Courtney, who went to go all the way around the outside. Frosty moves up a spot there as well. James just leaps straight across the top of the curbs and then slides out the other side. So Courtney recognised the slow launch by Coulthard and then had to go the long way. And then the when he got here, he didn't have anywhere to go, did he? And the danger here is that you can break the car. Got away with it. Reynolds had to do the same in the pen ride entry. Now, this is the explanation as to what happened with Will. And so uh, he's gone in very hard there at turn eight on, a, in relative terms, a cold tyre. May have also had a helping hand there. There'll be more to the story, no doubt. More replays down here. Oh, oh yeah, no what's more way. to the story, all right? So it was Todd Kelly and Will Davison. I didn't catch the other car, but that was three wide into turn eight. So that's not part of the Queensbury rules. I think it's Moffat. I think it was Moffat. So we just said about the way that Fabian Coulthard and Shane Van Gisberg had approached turn eight, but there were three guys involved in that. See the inside car, but I think Todd Kelly was the mid middle car, Rihanna. Will Davison, I think you just had a chance to see the replay. Looked pretty nasty heading into turn eight. Yeah, I know, I know what happened. So um, yeah, I just I didn't know someone was next to Todd. I was just next to Todd, knowing I was just about to back out and give him right away into turn eight. Just I'm on the far left there, and um, next thing his car's just come across the front of me, and I noticed he had someone squeezing him on the inside of him. So uh, I was just about to tuck him behind Todd, and, and uh, yeah. Very wide into one, into eight, depending on the year, so uh, anyway. Tough way to start the season with a new sponsor on board. We'll see you out there tomorrow. Absolutely, cheers. All that build up, for, I think, yeah, all that build up in the last 90 days, all that hard work, a new sponsor, all the training, and all of a sudden it's over and out inside one racing lap in the first race of the year, but there are many more to come. But, uh, yeah, awkward situation. Racing incident when you've got three wide in a situation battling for turn eight. There's going to be a loser. Fortunately, today it was Will Davison. 1.5 seconds is the steady margin between Coulthard and Van Gisbergen. As they head off on lap five, he's got a good margin. He built it up on cold tyres. So he made the move at turn seven, was in a great position on the run to turn eight on lap one, and then really over the next half a lap was where he put most of that margin on Shane. And now it's steady as Van Gisbergen's tyre pressures and temperatures have come up and normalised as well. So there'll be very substantial differences, no doubt, between the way in which the cars are set up, and each team's got its own individual ideas as to how they run their cold starting pressures. But for Coulthard, the car converted to immediate pace, straight off the bat. Other than the bobble start, the rest of it looked great. E exactly, and I think the other part that we'll keep a real eye on is James Courtney's pace because Courtney was right up in behind Van Gisbergen and was actually starting to have a look for a way by. So was McLaughlin on Winterbottom. So when this race just settles down a little bit, we'll get a much better guide as to what that looks like. Now, there's a post-race investigation, car 15 and 19 at turn 8. I think it's the right... I think the numbers are wrong there at the turn because it was car 7. 7, yeah. We're not 100% sure of the inside car because there were three. But I think exactly yeah. It's not two cars, and they got one of those cars wrong. Yeah, the race there control has just corrected, corrected that. It's now become car seven, so that's been picked up. So car seven and car 19. Um, but there's more to come on that one. And guys, I just uh, quickly grabbed Mark Dutton. Uh, looking at what happened here, you brought Jamie Wincup in based on thinking that that was going to cause a safety car. Will Davison on the wall? Yeah, it's, it's a possibility. We thought it was a bit of a long shot, but also the risk of queuing is, is such a heavy penalty. Um, we've rolled the dice a little bit. We uh, we don't know what the deck is like on these tyres. We think it'll be pretty good, hence why uh, we're, we're confident Jamie will be able to do it. But uh, time will tell. Thanks, bud. Cheers. So they put about 37 litres of fuel in Jamie's car in that stop. 
taking advantage of now some clear tracks. So we'll monitor his lap speed, and his last lap was a uh, 1 minute 21.8. His best lap so far has been a 121.6. Peak speed in the race so far is 21.2 by comparison. That's Fabian Coulthard. has got the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. But the fresh air will probably serve Wind Cup well out there at the moment. So we'll just keep a bit of an eye on him. He's 25th at the moment, effectively last because Will Davison is back in the pit lane. Absolutely full tanks now versus the rest that wouldn't have started with full tanks. Yeah, so he's got 80 odd liters, yeah. uh, 80 odd kilos, I beg your pardon. So here we go, we've got McLaughlin in now as well. Interesting on lap seven to change okay, tires. Behind, 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 behind. Go, go. That was so close to hitting the mega. Falcon of Jason Bright. So this is a pro-drive car. Mega bolt fuel support for Jason Bright, who's moved. After many years with Brad Jones racing into the squad that he had success with back in the mid-2000s. Clean departure for him. So fastest lap of the race now, Van Gisbergen. And that's how close it was on departure from McLaughlin versus Bright. Not much in it. Chopper Cam showed us the story there. So 21.08 for Van Gisbergen on the last lap, and this is the angle from the front of the cars. Luckily for both drivers, no contact there. Turn 11 back to live pictures now on lap 7 of 78. We're looking at the Erebus Motorsport Penrite entry of David Reynolds. I mentioned in the walk-around pre-race that it's a brand-new car. And, uh, David's really happy and comfortable within that race team at the moment. He's doing a good job. Currently sitting in seventh position. Lap speed is good. Average pace across the top ten is about a mid-21 at the moment. And he's well in that pace. He's got Cam Waters right behind him. He's got off to a really strong start. Three of the Pro Drive cars in the top ten shootout. And Dave Reynolds is one of the real winners of those opening laps. He's got up three positions. Craig Lowndes fans, he's up four positions. So this is a pretty healthy battle here with Lowndes putting pressure on Cam Waters on lap eight. Yeah. He's great shot in the run into turn one and things have tightened up nicely as Garth Tander peels off and takes a stop between Coulthard and Van Gisbergen and just out of frame at the moment is James Courtney. So the Shell V-Power racing forward of Fabian Coulthard, amazing pace on the opening lap. At one stage, got to a second and a half out in the lead, and slowly but surely that's evaporated. Our well, theory is higher cold tyre starting pressures for Coulthard, or it might be a balance issue, and Scott Pye in car two, Mobile One HSV Racing. So you've got Tander in there as well, and rounding up his old position, and car, car number two hard when you've spent that many years driving into what was once a Holden racing team pick for Tanda, seriously, actually driving into the GRM box would do your head in for the first few races no doubt, especially because they're so close to each other so this is an intriguing battle because Coulter, who was very aggressive on the opening lap, made a nice move up the inside at turn 8 as Neil said, got away to 1.5 second lead and that has evaporated No, I'm not next to him. James Courtney's not too far away in that battle because he actually looked quite strong against Van Gisberg and all early also. So maybe they have been a little bit conservative with those start pressures given this is the first time that we've run on these tyres. This is Wink Cup and Scott McLaughlin together. So they're firing along. They've obviously filled those cars up. And both of them won't want to be having a race because they actually want clear track. Looks on the computer timing at the moment as though McLaughlin's got a bit more pace than McLaughlin. The other fella that's quick. Good, with that great job. Think of your bars. Think of your bars. Ludo talking about anti roll bars in the Falcon. Also quick out there at the moment is Tim Slade, the Freightliner entry. Remember, he just stopped a moment ago. They've got fresh rubber on the car, and he's done some very fancy sector splits.
Just walked into DJR Team Penske and spoke to Ryan's story about Fabian Coulthard. Now, we use acronyms sometimes in this game. He is complaining of IFL, inside front locking, and that is why we now have this close battle that you're watching between Coulthard and Van Gisbergen. and they are contemplating what to do next. Are they going to change up the strategy in here to cope with that? Well, adjusting the cars, playing with them on the run during the day is a big part of the game, and having enough adjustability in the anti-roll bars front and rear in the car is a big part of the okay, story. Okay, for a few red five, I think you should check uh, blue. Yep, sorry, blue. Blue boy, correct. Blue boy, correct. So Phil Keat giving Fabian anti roll bar positions front and rear, blue and red. He got fumbled in the delivery of it, which meant that for Fabian, he had to listen to the message on the braking area as Cam Waters comes in as well. And it's always hard when someone's talking to you and you're trying to actually pick your line, find your braking reference, and you've got Van Gisbergen all over you. And he just plays, he absolutely plays for keeps. 100%. In fact, Phil should have stopped speaking given that you could see the car on the monitor and let him run into turn one, put it off for half a lap, let him, let him give him the advice up here. Now, see Van Gisbergen try to get a gulp of cleaner air there for a moment with the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car. And Courtney's in a good spot here at the moment. If he gets much closer, he starts to swallow all the hot air. It hurts the brakes, hurts the engine performance. It hurts him. You can feel it in the cabin. So just the watching brief for James Courtney, twice Clipsal 500 champion, He's a good ploy at the moment. He's close, but he doesn't need to be too close that he actually gets a heap of aero wash. Interesting, just then when we had that great Red Rooster chopper shot from seven to eight, it looked like Fabian's straight line speed was much better than Van Gisbergen's. Check this out. Very noticeable differences in mid-corner speed between both, particularly in the slow corners. It's about 65 kilometres an hour at uh, turn 14 the hairpin watch van gisbergen here he's had a good run through the center chicane and he's got right on him now in the braking area at turn four what you don't see from that shot of the bumps he's now beginning to think about a positional challenge he's wide of him at turn four so he's starting to search high and low for some air at the moment van gisbergen it's going to be on here remember the pass was made previously the other way around on the run between seven and eight this is seven right there is where van gisbergen turned that car yesterday they both straddle the exit curb. Good grunt. Good grunt, car 17. Straight line speed's impressive. We'll take some beating. I wouldn't want to lose three or four car lengths in that little run. Huh? No. No. We were doing hand signals up here. <laughs> you were like, wow. And there's a lot of hot air going back into car 97 here as well. Both groups inside Red Bull Holden Racing Team and Shell V Power Racing. Big chance that this is going to be on for the balance of the year and do not discount the car behind james courtney over one hsv racing those guys have been working hard to try and find the deficiencies that they've had at certain tracks this has not been one of them they've always been strong here and courtney's shown that and he's showing it again this weekend who could forget that epic battle with courtney and wing cup here last year one of the best races we've ever seen for whatever reason, the people at what was Holden Racing Team have always had good cars on these styles of tracks. Homebush, Townsville, Adelaide, Gold Coast. I'm just going to stay with James for a minute. I want to watch the wheel work and everything in all the left and right hand, the second gear stuff, very little in the way of having to shift the uh, hand position on the wheel. So he's able to just turn the car, put it where he wants, and Van Gisbergen again gulping some fresh air on the run to turn eight. So James not having to play a lot with the steering wheel. He's not having to stab at it. So he's just rolling it in, touching his apexes. There he is, finds the apex and then just peels the lock off. That's a stable car. And look that way up through Wakefield Street, East Terrace and all that end of the track in second gear as well. And what you don't want, and why you're making the point, what you don't want is a nervous car. So you often see when you turn the wheel, there's a Left-hand rear tyre deflated there for Todd. Be careful here, mate. Just gets around turn eight. Good job. But it's it's one. We saw Jamie Winkup have a massive moment there a few years ago also with the left-hand rear tyre flat. But what you always see, uh -oh. lost it off the road there at turn 14. He's run wide in the braking area. But what you want to want to see when you turn the yeah, wheel okay, is not to come off so fast because then you, you know they're twitchy and that was 
pretty insightful stuff in terms of technique there from Courtney and how nice the car is. If they're twitchy, they're hard to drive, easy to make a mistake, and very hard on the tyres. So Moskett's had that moment the final corner, and a bunch have now stepped up in front of him, including uh, Rick Kelly, David Reynolds, Craig Lowndes. Lowndes up for seventh. Again, Van Gisbergen just searching to get some fresh air in that car. They'll be watching water temperature in that engine pretty carefully. That was a moment. And he has a look at him now, Van Gisbergen. He sensed the slide. Hit him. Oh, oh, he's giving him a little touch. He's just giving him a little rough up. That's a hello and welcome to 2017 right there. Turn 11. So when you give Van Gisbergen even a tiny percentage of incentive, he's going to be all on you. So he's just starting to have a little bit of a battle and Rusty described before the considerations inside the garage at Shell Big Power Racing. And that's Grant McPherson just passing on what Roland Dane will be passing on to him, which is <laughs> nice, clean driving, please. In other words, we don't need a penalty early in the race. That certainly was nothing that would have raised any eyebrows, but it's good to try and stay in authority with the driver, make sure that the driver's thinking about what has to happen. There's a long, long, long way to go. He's on him, Scapey. And Fabian's got inside front wheel locking drama going. He locked the left front of the 11 on the last lap. He locked the right front there at Wakefield into turn four. Now check this out. Check the straight line speed. See that Falcon's got good straight line speed. That will take some beating through the course of the day. And what it means is you've got to try so hard here to get through eight to put yourself in a passing spot. So the proximity of the car, you need to be two or three car lengths further up the road, closer to Fabian to make that make that move stick. I wonder whether Red Bull have gone for a leaner air fuel ratio for, for mileage. Uh, they get, they're going to bring Coulthard in. So we've already seen McLaughlin in, so they're going to get him out of the this position before he gets before it actually goes pear shaped. And here we go. So that's new leader Shane Van Gisbergen and James Courtney follows. So look for an adjustment on car 12 here. See what they can do to ride heights to try and get some load on the front. Last of the wheels are going on now. All the wheels are done. We're just waiting on the fuel. All clear, all clear. All clear. I didn't see anything. No. Oh. So James does the right thing there. He just doesn't push it to the brink. Hey, fellas, I can confirm you. We probably didn't see it. It was done on the right-hand side of the car. There was a rear right height adjustment. So you're spot on, Bromley. They did make the change to car 12. OK, thanks, Murphy. I've only done it. That's the cross weights they've played with. So they've only done it in one corner of the car. Look at this. Wind Cup. And quite a few people on the radio okay, now mate, talking about prize, coming in. 17 laps old, mate. Wind Cup prize is 17 laps old. You should be able to hold him just get a bunch of pace. So James Courtney being informed about Jamie Wind uh, Cup's position and the tyre age. Van Gisbergen's the leader, three and a half seconds over Winterbottom and then Rick Kelly. So it's Holden, Ford, Nissan, one, two and three. David Reynolds in position four, great drive. Craig Lowndes up to fifth, then Perkat, Mostert, Moffat, Holdsworth and Caruso. More problems here for Mostert. Second time he's been off. Remember he had a problem at the final corner. So what's happening with Chaz Mostert? Not having a comfortable run out there at the moment. Perkat's in, Holdsworth's in, there's a lot going on. We just came into the pit stop. Uh, they didn't make any changes to their car, so he's got a real problem just with the setup. He's uncomfortable with the way the car is handling at the moment, and uh, it's caused him to make a few mistakes. On the other thing with one of those pit stops before we saw James Courtney, Fabian Coulthard come in, and uh, the team at Mobile One HSB Racing tried to undercut Coulthard. They put six litres less in that car than what Coulthard did, but it was unable to happen, so they missed the opportunity there. Yeah, the last couple of minutes have been pretty intense, haven't they? Uh, with Tim Slade up in the tyre wall there, you can see the damage on the front left corner of the freight line of car. Thanks for the update, Greg. But I don't know why they've now sent the real insurance safety car out. Because it's all clear, isn't it? And this is the reason why. Nick Perkett down the inside of Tim Slade. He was a long way up there. 
but that, that's going to be an awkward discussion back in that garage post race and next week and this rejoin when Greg was doing his report I saw it held the breath and they were screaming at James Moffat about just dropping in the queue here and he did it beautifully and uh, Chas Mostert's had one or two dramas. He nearly drilled the back of his teammate, Mark Winterbottom, there at the final corner. And that was why he dropped all those spots. And then there was more trauma for him down here at 11. That's a whisker away from being in the kitty litter and stuck. So Super Chief Auto Racer is having a tough afternoon at the moment. And here's the replay from on board. And it's just pinched through his. He may have caught a bit of curb with that one. So two wild moments for him down there. Remember... Mostert is another, oh, that's a big slide by Van Gisberg. And we called it when he was right in behind Fabian. And one of the issues is because he's losing so much ground between turn seven and eight. Oh, that's yeah, why the slide like, car's out. I saw some bits hanging off Slade's car as he came back onto the racetrack. So I figured that might have been uh, the case. Right. There's Alex Rullo, who's now... 22 laps into 78. Right, be a nice little break for him, actually. So I think Van Gisberg, and one of the issues that he's going to have is when you lose that much ground in a straight line, you've got to try so hard through turn eight to get yourself into a position to pass at turn nine. And that was a monster moment. He had a big slide. He only just gathered it up before he hit the fence on the outside. So now the safety car, real insurance safety car lights are out on the Porsche KN. And Fabian Coulthard now has control of the field. Right in behind there. It's a good move by James Courtney to dive in when he did. So Coulthard, Courtney, Win Cup. They've played him in, but remember he's on old tyres. Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin, also with that early stop. Winterbottom, Waters, Kelly, Perkat, Lowndes, Tander. Okay, I'm just uh, whirring through a few numbers here, and Van Gisbergen, though he doesn't have track position, in fourth at the moment. Thank you, car in pit lane. He does have decent numbers to play with in the refuel, so he's got about four seconds of fuel in hand over those that are at the top of this chart at the moment. So they've invested a little bit in the first stop, yep. and they're looking for the dividend now in the back end of the race in the final stop to home. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Take a look for James Courtney to have an early dive. Because the thing about this now is you've got to make hay. He's got to have a dive at Fabian. Now, Fabian may have also chosen to change those tyre pressures after the first run. They will have learnt from the first run, remembering everybody on the new tyre. And there's James Courtney right up in behind on the way into Turn 4. We come Van Gisberg, and that's a great shot. Shows those bumps and the way that the cars use all the road off Wakefield Street. Now onto the back straight. This is the run that I was saying before. Fabian's got great speed in this short shoot up to turn eight. Look at the gap he's got there. He's even got gap on the HRT car. So if you're doing engine comparisons, definitely DJR Team Penske. I love that rear shot through turn eight. Cool, isn't it? It is unbelievable. But if you look at that engine comparison, they look like they've got healthy engine performance at this point of the year. So when we get right near the critical lap for the fuel up to home, notwithstanding that we could end up with a safety car, Van Gisbergen needs to put on 79 to 80 litres of fuel. Uh, Coulthard, 92 litres. Courtney, 94 litres. Wind Cup, 103 litres, just to put it in perspective. James Courtney on that lap. He's done the fastest lap of the race at 20.97. It's 0.4 behind Fabian Coulthard. Jamie Wincut and Ben Gisberg and Lina Stern. Austin was having a little last minute lunch there at Michael Caruso and chose just to tuck the nose in and not go on with it. Sorry, Mark, I didn't mean to step on you there before, but... Um, 
couple of guys just to also keep an eye on from the strategy standpoint. Not quite the peak speed of the absolute leaders, but well in this game at the moment, include James Moffat and uh, David Reynolds. They put a stack of fuel on, and that helps their cause now in this final stop. So, no factors for sure. Simona Di Silvestro is currently 20th. She's done a really good job through the course of the weekend. Very difficult assignment, not having driven touring cars or tin tops, not having driven on the streets of Adelaide. This is one of the wildest racetracks anywhere in the world. Big slide for Simona on the way out of turn 11. But she's approached this very well. And after today's 250 Ks, it will be a very worthwhile experience for her physically and mentally getting to grips with these cars and understanding some of the other drivers and the way they go about the business, Rihanna. Guys, I just want to quickly see if I can jump in with Brad Jones. I know you're so busy, but we just want to get your opinion and thoughts. It's always awkward when the teammates have a little nudge together. Um, yeah, but it's a pretty easy one. I, I didn't really see it. I was so busy running around when we were organising Timmy to come in that I, you know, I don't have an opinion on it yet. I mean, look, it's, it's never comfortable when teammates get together. And we talked about it before the start of the race. It's Nick's first race with the team. But, you know, it's racing and this sort of stuff happens. So we'll sort that after the race. Thanks, Brad. No worries. Philosophical view. And we were watching Van Gisbergen get down the inside of Wind Cup there. He did it nicely, too. He just tucked in. And Jamie just came out and slotted straight in behind. There we are at Red Bull Holden Racing Team. Grant McPherson on the left, Mark Dutton, David Couch, you closest to camera. No breach, by the way, off the back of Brad's comments there from race control. The incident between cars 14 and 8 at turn 6. No breach of the rules found. Craig Baird is the driving standards advisor for 2017. Deputy race director is Michael Massey. Race director is Tim Schenken. And there's a concerted effort to embrace the notion of play on in the rules, so only resorting to penalties when it's absolutely required. So a little bit of brake locking going on here in this intense battle between Coulthard and Courtney. Van Gisbergen moves up a spot, as you saw a moment ago. Faden using a lot of curve there at turn five, really having to throw the car, which kind of suggests it's not turning to his liking. The more curve you use, generally you give away that you've, you've actually got to find another way to get the performance in the car and go and explain your hand signals. I'm the only person that can see them scoping. As the gap at the end of performance is really impressive. It's just something for nothing. You've got to try pretty hard at turn eight to make that up. <laughs> Good luck. Well, making up that kind of gap, you might accidentally jump into the next postcode at turn eight. You just want to be careful of that one. This is turn 11. This has been a bit of a trap for a number of drivers. Gee, Coulthard's really having to monster those curbs at the moment. Again, up and over, hard, aggressive. Lachlan's not far out of the picture here either in fifth position. At the moment, we've got uh, five seconds covering the top nine cars, Percat being the ninth car. This is the lockup that I made reference to a moment ago on the run into turn one and so that's cool and that kind of reconfirms what i thought that just having a battle getting that car to change direction that's the reason why he's hooking it up on the curb a little bit more it is cool courtney van gisbergen courtney's done the fastest lap of the race then wing cup mclaughlin winterbottom waters and rick kelly great shot here with the red rooster Chopper showing us the run up to turn eight. And 245k approach speed, 225 mid corner speed. Fabian Coulthard continues to lead from James Courtney. Courtney hasn't lost any ground. He's still 0.3, 0.4 behind. As you said before, Neil, he's on the fastest lap of the race. It's got a really nice flow going between Fabian and James Courtney. And just in behind is Shane Van Gisbergen. Thought I'd try and talk to Dr. Ryan's story at uh, Shelby Power Racing. Given that car 17 may be under investigation for a potential breach of safety car procedure. Ryan, can I talk to you? Firstly, how do you feel about that for Scotty McLaughlin? Well, uh, no idea. We'll wait played. and see how it plays out. All right, can you tell us what you, what the, you know, potential breach is? What did he perhaps do wrong? Oh, I think it was uh, in regards to moving 
after not meant to be moved. So. Re restart procedures. Sorry. Yes. And and quick report cut on Fabian Coulthard too. We we know he's had some inside front locking issues, and the boys in commentary have talked about him pushing, battling. Okay. We're getting pit lane penalty. That's the message from Ben Croke there now to Ryan Story. So that is happening. We'll get out of here. Yeah, so we're just hounding up this one at the moment. Just letting it play out. So uh, safety car restart procedure. PLP pit lane drive through penalty for card number 17 for uh, Scott McLaughlin. And I reckon it's for weaving after the safety car lights went out. So let's have a look at it in replay, see if we can understand it. We're looking for the car that's fifth in the queue. And it's in the shell colours, car number 17, Scott McLaughlin. So the safety car's long gone. His teammate Fabian Coulthard has control of the field. He didn't weave then. Must have been before that. I mean, earlier. Yeah. And, and what happened? happens in that circumstance is one of the guys around it would have been Mark Winnebottom or one of the other guys have reported it in. Character building day one at the office for Scott McLaughlin having served the drive through penalty for Shelby Power Racing. Dr Ryan's story in the garage at Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske and that puts him well down the order now down in 24th position as a result of that. That's how harsh a drive through the lane is. So it must have been pretty obvious and it's been spotted by someone somewhere for that to be metered out. We didn't see it on that replay. So 19 positions for McLaughlin. Make lounge now down the inside of Perkett. Perkett turns in. So that was an interesting move. He was almost up there far enough. Dave Reynolds right in behind. This is the battle for 8th, 9th and 10th. Now start to get your thoughts around the critical lap. We'll get a bit of an understanding as to not only engine performance, but also economy now as well. And who blinks and who has to come in and whether they're on top of each other. And on our numbers at the moment, Van Gisbergen is in a very good position took more fuel in the first stop, takes less literage now in the second stop. And I'll remind you of the numbers that I rattled out there before as we watch Lowndes, who's got the chase going with Nick Perkat. So Van Gisbergen, 79 to 80 litres, Coulthard, 92 litres. So I just want to have a look at this uh, weaving, this alleged weaving. And yeah, okay, hang up. There it is. So, and uh, lights are out up there. Yeah. 99. Curve, turn two. Right, so lights are out on the safety car, so that's the reason, and you can actually quite clearly see him weaving in the background. So that was a uh, that's a little brain fade, unfortunately. Well, and communication, because as soon as that happens, the light, as soon as the lights go out, all the protocols of being behind the safety car have got to be reminded to the driver. So between Ludo and Scott, Scott's the man at the helm, but he probably should have had a little reminder: no weaving. Big story. So back to the other one about fuel. So Van Gisbergen to put on 79 to 80 litres. Coulthard to put on about 92. Courtney to stick on about 94. And Wincup about 103. I've only done four of them. There's obviously a few others in this game as well. We need to have a look at Winterbottom's numbers. He's currently in fifth. Bad sportsmanship flag also for Dale Wood. Using too much of the turn one, two curbing. Now, I know you're not going to like me. I know you're not going to like me. Why would, why would you think that? But if you go from 5th to 24th for weaving, does that penalty fit the crime? It doesn't. It's, it's too severe. It's a big one. It's a big penalty. Do you still like me? Ah, it's, it's okay. I always like you. <laughs> I'm just sitting here contemplating the meaning of it all. The problem is, I think you find that it's just one of those things that's absolute. And, and, and right at the moment, I haven't got my ops manual right at my hands. Yeah, that was my Marcel Marceau impression, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so like I... If it's absolute, which I'm pretty sure it is in the rules, there's no wriggle room on it. That's right. There's no discretion here. But as a, as a penalty, it 
It's a pretty big one. Five seconds at the end of the race or something would probably be a more appropriate penalty. Anyway, we'll move on. Coulthard, Courtney, Van Gisbergen, Winkup, Winterbottom, Waters, Kelly, Perkat, Lowndes, Reynolds. That's your top ten. This is a good battle now because Van Gisbergen's made real ground up to the back of James Courtney. And their fastest laps are a telling tale because a 21.07 for Coulthard, a 20.97 for Courtney, a 21.08 for Van Gisbergen. So less than a tenth of a second between the three cars in terms of their fastest lap. Now, uh, Courtney's also been under investigation in terms of pit lane procedure and no breach found for car number 22 that's just come up with the race control lane. First, second. Courtney clicks with this racetrack, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? He's just got an affinity with the place. He seems to instantly know what he needs and set up. Remember that the, the time intervals of the corners here are so tight relative to many of the other tracks we go where you hang the car on the tyre for long, long periods of time. So the longest you spend turning here anywhere is actually the last corner, and it's almost walking pace. It's just under five seconds and 65 k's. I mean, you're quicker than that in the Woolworths car park in Melbourne. But uh, most of the rest of the corners are somewhere between a second and a half to two, two and a half seconds. So the point I'm making is the direction change at this racetrack is very, very quick and sharp. And that's typically been something the Walkinshaw racing cars have been good at in recent years, Panda and certainly Courtney. Where they hang the car on the tyre for longer, that's been their problem. Yeah. And it hasn't always been something that's easily cured. Turn nine, you spend, it's also super slow, 4.8 seconds. And then the fast one at turn eight is 4.7 seconds. But everything else is just a quick jink and you're off in another direction. Well, both those corners you're talking about, nine and 14, I mean, they're 16, 65 K, aren't they? So they're, they're not corners that are normal to places like Phillip Island or Sydney Motorsport Park or even Ipswich or something. So your point is 100%. That's the corner that I love, that big, fast right-hander at turn eight. That's a great shot. And down to turn nine. This is the corner we just spoke of. 60K in first or second gear. A lot of guys use second gear to conserve the rear tyre. They've been Coulthard, Courtney, Van Gisbergen. Welcome back to the Clipsal 500 live free and in HD here on 10. Troubles for Todd Kelly in the car sales. Nissan goes into pit lane as we approach the halfway mark. Don't forget RPM is back next Sunday, 4 p.m. on 10. Make sure you join us. An exclusive with Aussie Grit Mark Weather opens up on Life After Motorsport. That's RPM, the new look RPM, back 4 p.m. next Sunday. He's having a lunge now, Van Gisbergen down the inside. He caught some Kirby, locked the rears on the run into nine men with Courtney. Remember, they had a great exchange here last year. But he did catch a lot of curb at eight, and it bounced out towards the fence. I'm surprised he was even close enough when they got down to the hairpin to even have a sniff. I agree. He actually, he was bowling the way in, and when he had that big move, his line at turn eight's weird. Courtney that was a big, wide. Courtney's locked was up. Courtney or, or Coulthard? I'm not sure whether it was, it was Fabian or James. Yeah, it was James. Was it? Yeah, sorry. He got away with it because he, he's still got a massive gap. So all of a sudden, that margin's opened up between the top three, and just a heartbeat ago, they were pretty much line astern. As so Courtney couldn't get it stopped, I could see him battling to turn it, and there was smoke coming from the front of car 22. So all these guys are working the last phase of these tyres out, and it's hard at the moment. There's not a lot of grip out there. That's the reason for the little unforced errors here and there. They've got little to work with. So watch the curb. I think he gets a bit of it here, and he has a little touch with uh, Courtney. And I think he just upset the car slightly on the inside as well. It's here. This is the one. Check this out. So at that spot, that was the one that he had a turn in. And, and when he gets there, Neil, when we, when we watch the approach phase to that corner, he's about three or 400 mil wider than anybody else. He's got the left-hand front wheel over the yellow line, or the white line, and he moves it across to the inside in a different rate. So he's got a different driving style and, te and technique, like a turning technique at turn eight, which sometimes serves you, it serves you well for actually getting the car to the corner, but it made a big slide there in behind Courtney. He gathered it up nicely. 
best line that I've caught on the radio so far this weekend from Krusty from Richard Holway down at Wilson Security Racing GRM. He said to Tanda, keep drinking. <laughs> I don't reckon he'll need much in the way of incentive there because it would be roaring hot. Trouble at the end of Wakefield Street as well. I can hear a lock up in the background. There's a, one or two smoke signals down there. So people battling with their tyres at the end of this sequence now. We're right in the zone where we're starting to see people get themselves sorted out to come into the pit lane. And Jamie Winkup is being told to come in, no option. Yeah. Hey guys, I just uh, watched that pit stop when Todd Kelly came in in the number seven. They took that wheel, if you can see. Obviously, this tyre is completely destroyed. There's no marks on the rim. He didn't hit anything. He reported he didn't hit anything uh, compared to the first time he had a puncture, but he was a, a touch with another car. So they didn't change anything underneath it. There was no sign of anything uh, rubbing this tyre from under the guard. So they're a little bit perplexed by this and just adds, uh, unfortunately, some pain to it all. But number seven hasn't managed to get all its fuel drop on the car, so Todd will have to come to the lane again. Thanks, Murph. And that other lock-up that we could hear in the background before was Todd Kelly up at Turn 4. So these oh, guys are still out. Gee, he almost went off then. He was off the... had half a tyre off the road. Yeah, and it's real easy on the painted lines or even if you venture onto the grass to bowl the wide down there. So we're seeing a stretch in the fuel range as a result of the safety car and, as you pointed out, wind cup in. The race control are monitoring more body work on the circuit somewhere as well, I can hear. This is fuel to the finish for Wind Cup. Looks like he's quite got the pace in this car. Well, he dropped four and a half seconds behind Van Gisberg and because of that tyre rage. He probably did a pretty good job based on how long they were on yeah, the car for. It's a bit of an unfair comparison because early on the stint looked OK, but he had to stretch it along the way. Ten seconds remaining. Lane is still clear. Five seconds remaining. Lane is clear, clear to go when you drop. Clear to go when you drop. That's a lot of fuel to go in that car. Clear, go, 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 go. And that's when you really notice the heat in the car sitting still for that long. So that's Wind Cup done, and Chaz Mostert has had a difficult run this afternoon in the super cheap car. Time. McLaughlin's clawing his way back up in car 17. He's now in 17th position in behind Simona Di Silvestro in the Team Harvey Norman entry. That's Alex Rulo. His debut in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. And, uh, and uh, in comes Courtney. And uh, uh, I reckon Bright's got a failed cool suit. They're going to throw water all over. They rip the window out of that car and they're going to throw water. Wow, of all the days to have that happen. Okay, mate. What's going on? Yeah. All clear of mate. So, we're at this critical phase okay, of the race. Quick, 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 quick. Let's go. Seeing lots of cars okay, making this final mate. stop. All clear. Still clear. Still clear. Needed Still about clear. 94 litres of fuel. The Still refuel clear. rate's three and three quarter litres a second. Still clear. Still clear. Go, mate. Get out of here. Go, go. Didn't sound polite, did it? Get out of here. No. Oh, nice manners. <laughs> Lots of fresh air there for him. Waters in, Tander in, Slade in, Douglas in. Waters now out of the lane. So that's an interesting gap. It's caught in a wing cup, is real. So he's made a lot of ground, Courtney, based on that last fill, and we spoke of how long Wing Cup had to stand still for. Here we go. Now, the games begin here. Coulthard in the lane. Critical stop now. According to my numbers, needs about 92 litres of fuel. Going to tweak it. We're going to tweak it. Yep, they are tweaking it right now. And they'll probably want to stiffen the back of the car up based on that Inside front wheel locking. Okay, just finishing off that change now. The wheel's going on. And the more rubber okay, down, the stiffer you can run the cars. On the more grip, more car. spring rate. Once we've got dropped you, we'll be good to go. Still clear. Craig Lowndes in also. All good. Nice clear. stop. Very composed. It was. No panic. So Lowndes in, and uh, I said before that intercepted a radio message for Bright. I reckon he's got heat stress down there at the moment. They're going to yank the window and pour water on him. There's the gap. 
That's the gap Fabian to James Courtney. So the next one that we'll see is what happens when Van Gisbergen takes his stop. So it's a pretty big gap. And here's Lowndes dropping in with Waters. And his teammate Winkup just tucked in behind. And uh, James will try and sneak up the inside at turn four here on Craig. Does. Does it pretty easily. Cold tyres for Craig. He won't be able to get straight up to racing speed. He'll be okay in about half to three quarters of a lap. They'll come on. Now, Van Gisbergen is now in the lane. This is the critical stop of the race. He should come out in front. We reckon he's got 79 or 80 litres of fuel to drop. Okay, he was in a good on position the on the, the track. Please, we're doing four tyres fuel. We'll have a look at the screen tear off. Nice, nice on the mark. And all of that assumes a perfect stop. Sometimes they're not, as evidenced even Hello, just with the left rear there. No changes to this Pit car. Lane is clear. Ten seconds of fuel remaining. Pit lane is still clear. Five seconds of fuel. Pit lane is still clear. Clear to go. Clear to go. Just check this because it's really well managed. It's very, very good. Look at that yeah. for a margin. So straight in the game. And that's strategy. That's very clever strategy. Certainly is. So as I said earlier, sat still longer for the stop number one, took more fuel on, but then gained back up, up on the back of that lead pack. So had track position, then when they stopped second time, simple math just takes less time to fill it back up and get it to home on lap 44. So comfortably fueled to the end and has got track position. Now I'm talking about it all being corrected. The reality is Winterbomb's actually the leader at the moment of the race, so there's more people to still focus and process their second stop. But that we're talking about the leaders. And now Frosty's in, speak of the devil. That makes Rick Kelly our leader in car number 15 for single lead racing. Hercat. So, Rick Kelly, Michael Caruso, James Moffat, one, two, three. So, Winterbottom, Percat, Ty and McLaughlin now in the lane, fueling to the finish. Okay, you go on the drop, please. Go on the drop. Rego, zero to fuel. There you go, the leaders. Make sure the wheels are done before we hide on this fuel. He's going to put Frosty yeah, going to be up in fourth, is it? I think. Will he get out in front of Cam? Yeah, I think he might, but he might be vulnerable. No, he won't. To say he might be vulnerable when they get up to the top of turn four, and he still could be because he'll have Winkup looking to try and do exactly what he did to his teammate a lap earlier. So he has a sniff. Frosty knows he's there and just moves it to the right of the road ever so slightly. So this is a pretty wild battle pack. And look at this, down the inside goes Jamie. And he Jamie. tags him. He's tagged him and turned him. Oh. 180 degree spin for Winterbottom at turn five. Winkup will be in a bit of strife for that one, I think. I need to see another view just to see how far he got up there. Brendan Hogan, engineer, new partnership. Behind AD. He crisscrossed him and he went for the shallow dive at turn five, Jamie Winkup. But when Mark Winterbottom turned in, he wouldn't have known where Jamie was. And often, when you pop out of the mirror like that, it's very hard to understand where the other car is. I'm just not sure whether Mark Winterbottom turned right down to the apex or he left him some room. So we'll just have to have a look at that. So... Where does Rick come out? He's going to come out in front of Craig Lowndes. So that's going to put Rick Kelly into seventh position. It's been a great run, hasn't it? A lot of fuel coming out of that car as he first turned in. Not now. That's sealed up now. That's fine. So try to work out just how far up alongside Wink Cup was. He was going to dive at the right-hander. And then he, he chose to go down to the left. Now, Frosty wouldn't know where he is. Now, does Frosty turn right in? No, he doesn't turn right in. Here it is. Yeah, no, he's hidden behind the vehicle. I think Jamie's actually in a bit of strife for that one. 
Combat Squadron Chip Flag and Car 88 over use of the curbs at turn two. So uh, it looks better from that angle. Yeah, it looks like it's further up. All the different angles. It might be one that it ends up being looked at later. Interesting, both 5 and 88, both getting bad sportsmanship flag flags, both at a time when they've got other things to worry about <laughs> for overusing the curve at turn two. So here we are on board with Frosty. He rotates. He's lucky he didn't get cleaned up by someone who's exiting a blind corner there. Here it is again from the Red Rooster Chopper Cam. So little crisscross. Jamie dives down the inside, has to mount the curb because the gap diminishes only three quarters of a car width there and we stop it i mean it's right in the middle of the car very difficult to call those and it depends on which side you're on you know if you're in one squad you've got a polarized view and the same on the other side as well one of the things that uh, in rule 8.4 in the sporting code this year is that they've decided that unless someone is wholly to blame and it becomes obvious then they'd rather investigate it later when there's data available and you can look at the proper onboard camera views as well. So it might be something that gets preferred. And I'm with the team boss at Pro Drive, Tim Edwards, who had a good close look at all those replays as they unfolded. Have you got a view on that? Yeah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> That's my view, Ali. It'd be interesting to see. You know, they've obviously done a lot of work on the judicial system and, the, uh, you know, it's a good test case for them now to work through it. Go. Tim Edwards. He's the team principal at Pro Drive Racing Australia, and there's his man, Mark Winterbottom, who's now down in 15th place in car five, and not only having the frustrations of being involved in an incident at turn five, but also has a bad sportsmanship flag for heaving over the top of the turn two curb. And uh, race control confirming they will investigate 88 and five. So that's a live investigation now. They're not saying post-race. Suggests that uh, they may be looking to meter out something. So car number 34 is James Moffat, and uh, he's been trying, he's enjoying this car. He's trundling along nicely at the moment. Coulthard, Courtney, Waters, Rick Kelly, Lowndes, Wincup, Per, Cat, uh, followed by Mostert and James Moffat, who I made mention of before. He's just completed that final fill to the end run, and uh, he's been very comfortable in that car. Very, yes. very, very strong this weekend. Let's get back downstairs. Yeah, boys, and a brutal way for Taz Douglas to step into Lucas Gumbrell Motorsport this weekend. He's had a cool suit failure. They tried to punch the windows out of the car during the pit stop and send him out. But then, according to the team, he started talking gibberish, in their words, on the radio. So for safety, they pulled him in, and uh, his day is over for today. It's got Sinclair. We thought you'd come and get a bit of a report card on the performance of... Simona, she's doing a, a brilliant job. She's done an amazing job all week. You guys must be super impressed. Yeah, she's doing a fantastic job. We always knew this event would be tough, but yep. to be honest, um, she's probably exceeded our expectations at this point. Some of the things we've seen her do during practice and whatnot, you know, on the data, has been really encouraging. So for her now, it's about um, you know being able to put it together, lap in, lap out. But um, you know that's a good problem to have because the speed's certainly there. How's the uh, any comments from her sitting in that car at the moment, that sweat box, because it's going to be pretty warm. Probably hasn't dealt with something like that in a long time. No, she hasn't. You know, she said, made the comment earlier in the weekend, can we pull the front windscreen out? That's more what she's used to. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, she's a consummate professional and we're, we're really impressed with how professional she is. No complaining, just gets on with her. And, you know, we're seeing a great effort today and hopefully she can bring it home. And we, we bank that and we'll try again tomorrow. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. So while Scott Sinclair was in conversation there with Greg, we saw those shots of Dale Wood just limping into the pit lane. He's made it back now. We jump on board in the Team Harvey Norman entry. This is Simona Hart at work, currently in 21st position. Best lap of the race, 1 minute 22.1. And the fastest lap of the race is James Courtney, effectively uh, 21, 21 even, call it. So it's a 1.1 second margin between them. That's not bad, Very is it? good. And she did her fastest lap just a couple of laps ago following Todd Kelly. So she's learned from his experience. And that's... <laughs> That's a real credit to her for that. That's what I said up yesterday. You and I were in a conversation in here. When you hear that call on the radio, what did Blake say there? Was it 27 laps to go? Oh, my goodness. So when you're in the car and it's that hot and it's a tough afternoon and you hear that many laps to run, it underscores just how brutal Eclipse 500 is. And you can't really train for it. I made that point in the Hino Hub earlier on. Here we are inside the garage at Erebus. Dale Wood stepping out. He was limping into the pits there before very slowly. And you can see the level of fatigue. Hard to explain just from a physical standpoint how tough this is. Cabin temperatures 
almost 60 degrees. Heart rate high, physicality high. At no point do you get a rest. And about this stage of the race, there will be not a driver in this field that won't be seriously feeling it in terms of the conditions and how arduous this task is of 250 k's around the street race. So boys, we uh, saw the D Dale Wood entry from Erebus Motorsport coming to the pits, mate. Uh, are you all right there? You are very, very hot. Just, has your cool, cool suit failed as well? I don't know. That's, um, I don't know, the gearbox. Gearbox just suddenly, to, like a no gears, we just had a box full of neutrals, so. Not sure what's going on, it was hot out there. You were hot, so I mean, did also you driving around there with a cool suit that probably wasn't working properly? Oh, I think that cool suit was, cool suit was working, it's just hot. Thanks, bud. Yep. He's hurting. It's hard to even speak when you're in that sort of condition, so you feel for Dale Wood out there. And uh, it always feels worse when you've got problems. Now, here's a bit of old-fashioned communication for uh, somebody in one of the pro-drive cars, I presume, Jason Bright. Meantime, I didn't pick it up early, but Van Gisbergen's actually busted the lap record. The lap record was held by Wind Cup on a 21.05, uh, and Van Gisbergen's done a 20.9. Yeah, that, that only just happened in the two. So that's only, what's well, one hundredth of a second faster this, than the This is important, number. Mark, that uh, came, caption came up on screen, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, that if it's unclear, there's a preference to resolve after the race. And so the battle that ended up in contact at turn five between cars five and 88 between Winterbottom and Wind Cup is going to be resolved after the race. They'll look at it in more detail. The problem with all of the angles that we were seeing is each one of them gives you a, a different view and that makes it very difficult for all parties. So they'll now study data, take the supercars onboard cameras, which are a different camera to the ones that we have in our coverage, study it up and come up with an outcome. Sometimes it's just not that simple to even come up with an outcome that will be resolved later. So Dale would look pretty uh, pretty raw, didn't he? That's what you feel for him in those conditions. So great pace, Van Gisberg, and going back to the lap record. And uh, James Courtney's done the same thing. He's dipped under that old record, too. I think it stood for five odd years in the hands of Jamie Winkup. He did it back in the year 2012. And Moffat, Reynolds, Caruso, and now Tanda up in behind. This is the battle for 10th position. Ben Gisberg at now 3.96. So almost four seconds in front of Coulthard. So Ben Gisberg has really shown genuine car speed in this last sector of the race. No changes to that car, so he's had good pace from the start of the race. Wing Cup, after that little bit of contact with Winterbottom, may have actually had a, uh, a little bit of wheel alignment issue or right front damage because he's shown no pace front of Lowndes when that happened. He's back behind Craig Lowndes, he's currently seventh, and he's roughly half a second a lap slower than Van Gisberg and Coulthard. I've just confirmed Jason Bright is suffering with a malfunctioning radio. He's unable to hear the team, but they can hear him. He also doesn't have a working call suit. So, boys, I'm not sure, is it worse or better not knowing how long it is to go in this race <laughs> when you don't have a working call suit? That's a good better. point. Yeah, better. Yeah, I, I heard the radio chat before when they were talking about ripping the window out of it and throwing water all over him. As soon as I heard that, I went, uh oh So that's a pretty hard deal for Jason to see that the... the uh, driver's window is out and they've plucked out the passenger's window as well just to get some air movement through the cabin which the engineers prefer not to do because it makes a mess of the aero performance hurts the rear wing of the car but right now breathing takes precedence over aero and, and it won't be doing very much. yeah that's right but it won't be doing very much no. No, it'll be stinking hot in there so they're back to an old pit board so it'll be l for lap and p for position and all of that information is a lap old as well so the modern era you lucky you have all that information on your digital dashboard thanks to Motec. Van Gisbergen's got 4.3 seconds over Coulthard. You're watching the Clipsal 500 live free and in HD here on 10, the last 20 laps of race one of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. Shane Van Gisbergen leads Fabian Coulthard and James Courtney with Cameron Waters in fourth. Don't forget to join us March 24, 25 and 26 for the Australian Formula One Grand Prix, the start of a brand new season. Rulo's 
been called in here, kind of a 62 to Repair Management Australia entry for Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. And, uh, it's gone back out again, not sure what that was about. Meantime, car two has also been uh, in the back left corner again of Todd Kelly's car. There'd be a lot of damage from the flailing rubber. They've got something, there must be something rubbing in the underbody on that car. Young Alex Rullo is currently down in 23rd position and just looking at fastest laps we were talking about Simona before Alex's fastest lap is a 22.32 so he's roughly 2.3 seconds away I wonder whether it's the guard folded on Todd's car as a result of the contact on that yeah, first lap maybe yeah but um, because it's a composite guard Generally, they don't get into the tyre that hard. It makes me think there's something else metallic involved somewhere. Like when it bottoms out up in the shotgun panel, it's copping a whack. Or the, no doubt they'll have a long, hard look. Well, so the tyre's bigger, go, isn't it? Yeah, the tyre's bigger. Its outside diameter is uh, find the numbers at 5 or 15 mil bigger in total terms. But um, they're sending uh, Taz Douglas back out again. They've uh, refreshed him. Uh, it is 25, uh, 5 mil. Last, the, sorry, yeah, five mil difference in the side, outside diameter. I'm with Mark Dutton at Red Bull Racing Australia. Shane Van Gisbergen at the top. Nice start to the title defence there. But I want to ask about Jamie. Is he just sort of struggling a little at the moment? Yeah, we uh, we called him in on that safety car. That didn't happen, unfortunately. So uh, what happened there was it meant uh, he was running out of fuel quicker than other cars, had to pit. So he's doing a longer stint on his tyres. So, yeah, we haven't, we haven't played that one as well as we could have. Um, and then obviously there's the incident, which uh, he's, he was uh, he was totally in the clear from. That's that's his view from the car and ours from out of the car as well. Okay, there you go, boys. Thank you. Well, it's what you said. Well, <laughs> you get a disappointed view from Tim Edwards. You get a that was okay view from Mark Dutton. Depends on who you play for. Be forward hold. I can't recall the last time but anyone went. You know what? We we're 100% in the wrong there. Got that wrong. I'll take that one on the chin. That never happens. And that's part of the game. And, uh, you expect everybody to fight hard for their corner. In the end, there has to be an umpire. It's been a good battle, this one. It has been. And uh, he's kept the pressure on the whole way, hasn't he? And he'll be well torched at the end of it. Little Andy roll bar adjustment there for James Courtney, just to change the characteristic in the car. And you do, yeah, you're making hand gestures now, it's the straight line speed we made mention of earlier, but you do in this last phase of the race, in the last 15 laps, often see mistakes just because of the driver demand and how exhausted they are. It's very easy late in the race to make a simple mistake and somewhere like turn eight is probably the most difficult area. You see James make a big uh, brake bias adjustment there as well. Not dissimilar to what we've seen the Triple Eight race engineering cars in the recent past as well. They've found a way of making rapid adjustments because they're wanting to change the way the brake bias performance is front to rear in different sections of the track rather than using using the traditional rotary knob that's in the car that we've explained in years gone by, which they still have. Uh, that gives you a, a, a quick adjustment on the run usually preset and predetermined as to what you're trying to achieve. So he just reached down and put a little dark lever right next to the seat. Ooh. Max Ruller had an ugly moment there off the exit curve at turn 14. So here we go, just runs up into the dirt and the grass and as he's grabbed that next gear, ooh, that could have been pretty wild if it arrowed to the right. And Courtney's very good through turn eight. In fact, he's been the best. He's been the fastest there all weekend. So he's made real ground on Fabian that time. He's really starting to threaten now, isn't he? Much closer on this pass lap than he was the previous. He's officially down to 0.4 of a second between the two of them. So on that last lap where we rode with James, we saw an anti-roll bar change and also a change to brake bias. So he's continuing to chase and trim that car. And remember that with the Shell V-Power Racing entry of Fabian Coulthard, They've been hunting. Go. Better performance in that car as well. They made adjustments in both pit stops to try and get that car to brake and turn better. 
try and minimise the front wheel locking, that inside front locking. So it's an eight second margin, Van Gisbergen to Coulthard. That's why. And have a look at the numbers. Yeah. So he's blazing at the moment, Van Gisbergen. So he's picked up where he left off at the end of last year's championship, where he won on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park in our last race. But back it off now. Yeah, you don't need to do those lap times anymore. James had a big slide out of seven that time. That's probably hurt the straight line speed now on the run down towards turn eight. And that gives Fabian the breather that he needs. The track's really developing rubber grooves now too. You can see them beginning to appear everywhere. So it's gripping up. It'll be fast tomorrow depending on the conditions. I think it's just a fraction cooler again tomorrow. Uh, we're riding now with Rick Kelly, Sengled Racing, Nissan Altima. This is out of turn nine. Rick is currently in fifth. Cam Waters in front, who's earning his money this afternoon. He's had pressure for a long time now from Rick. Drivers in vastly different phases of their career. Here you go. There's the slide that I spoke about. So he lit it up at turn seven. He bounced it off the curb as soon as he touched the throttle. It slid. That's what happened to Van Gisbergen yesterday. So you look at Waters, race 45 in his career. For Rick Kelly, race 465. <laughs> yeah, there's a fair difference there, isn't it? Young Cam's only 22 years of age. It'll actually be a really good learning curve for him today. If he can hold off Rick Kelly. Because that experience in terms of just the resilience and the toughness to get through a, a race like this, but with someone very experienced behind. And Rick's a great racer. You know, he just continues. He's, he's dogged. He, he keeps on torturing. And the way that Cam's been driving through the course of the day, let's see if he can hold him up. I hope he does because he's currently in fourth position. It would be a great result for the young guy from Nilgira. As we just head into the last part of this race, wanted to check in with Barry Rogers. Barry, both the guys have had a, a pretty solid race, particularly James Moffat, currently sitting in 10th position. Yeah, look around it. Today, I mean, look, as much as we want to compete, we want to compete up the front, and we're not happy to be 10th or 12th or 13th, but it's just important to get some, you know, do some laps and uh, just further develop where we're going. So, no, please have the guys gone. Um, I think uh, James might be about 10th and 10 or a couple of spots behind, so if they could both get the 10 by the end, we'll be quite happy with that, I think. Thanks, Barry. No worries, thanks. Just had a quick word with Brad Busherson, who looks after or is engineering Cam Waters, and I said to him, do you reckon he can hold out Rick Kelly to the end of this race? He said his radio communications have been quiet, but they are confident he can do the job and hold Rick out here. So 14 laps now remain. Oh, that was a giant leap over the curb for Rick Kelly. He didn't get a curb off. What's going on there? because he was a metre in the air. <laughs> it was a hazard, wasn't it? Unbelievable. <laughs> that was a giant leap for mankind, that one. It was. That was huge. He crunched it hard. Let's have a look at the super slow-mo. Bang, up she oh. goes. Look at that. So it's in the air, on the angle, and then lands. And he's turning it down and uh, slides out the other side. It's Coxie. Cameron Cox. Dressed for battle. Mr. Fix-It down at Nissan Motorsport. He's, he's into everything. Yeah. You go down to the workshop and he's got every task known to man going on down there. I saw him down there at one stage changing brake shoes on an old Nissan Pulsar. Really? That tells you that you've actually got a skill set from one end of the business to the other when no. it comes to motor racing understanding and motoring understanding. You know what it tells you? Oh, they should have traded that car a long time ago. <laughs> brake shoes. Did you notice I said that? And uh, Alex Rulo has uh, also been given a bad sportsmanship warning for the overuse of curbs at turn two. So a few of them starting to get a little bit close to the edge. Now that's the second time that Rick's tripped over the curb down there. This time it slid more violently off the curb. You want to be careful because it starts to hurt the rear tyre too much. Craig Lowndes is next in the queue. Lowndes said to us all weekend, he said in a text exchange with me last night that he felt the car would be OK in the race turned out to be true yeah so he's rolling along there in sixth at the moment with Jamie his teammate right behind made up seven spots he qualified in 13 and if Rick keeps having the awkward moments at turn two and excites that rear tire he might even grab another he and Winkum have got very similar speed love this shot this big fast flowing corner 
just gets a stop there, Rick Kelly. Someone's having a battle stopping in the background there. You can hear the angry protest of Sir Dunlop Rubber in the background. It's turn 11. There's only be one or two shadows around the circuit here and there as well, which just makes it a little hard sometimes to pick your braking reference and your turning point. The data on the right-hand side gives you an idea of gear position and pace. And uh, that looked like it was a moment down at nine with Scott Pye and Scott McLaughlin. But I think that that was a close exchange down there between the two Scots. They're down at the moment in 17th and 18th position. High and McLaughlin. A tough afternoon for Scott McLaughlin. Especially after such a promise in terms of pace and qualifying. Little mistake. Putting back the top 10. But a little bit of a communication issue there at the restart is the problem. There's Slade down the inside of Mark Winterbottom. Turn four, Slade's currently up now to 15th. And if you're wondering, and you've only joined us late, Winterbottom and Wind Cup got together several laps ago, quite a few laps ago now, at turn five, resulting in Mark Winterbottom being turned around, and that's going to be investigated after the race, so that's news that we'll update you with either before we go off air or tomorrow when I hope you can join us for race two of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. In the meantime, Battle for second is well and truly alive. It's Fabian Coulthard from James Courtney. Meantime, Shane Van Gisberg has gone out to just on 11 seconds now. And the car number nine. Penalty, 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 car nine. Penalty, penalty, car nine. Overuse of the turn two curbs. Oh, it's about to roll that one out. So uh, car number nine overusing the curbs. So someone has finally busted the rule down there. They give them a set number of lives and they warned them with the bad sportsmanship flag but now the first to be a victim to that penalty is David Reynolds sadly uh, because it's been a very strong run for Erebus Penrite Racing that new car had a good go now Courtney is now well and truly in the hunt here so let's just keep a real close eye on this James will be trying everything to get the smoothest run out of seven flow the car through eight for the dive down at nine into the hairpin it's not quite close enough at the moment because that pace either the power down or the straight line speed or the combination of both for Fabian has got him in really good shape. James is right back on him again. So the next spot, occasionally you can sneak up the inside of the final corner, but that requires very, very good track position. Or he might have a sneak at turn four. Yeah. They're the three primary spots to keep an eye out. Turn four is at the end of Wakefield Street on those bumps. But when you go down the inside there, you are something of a pioneer because it's dirty and it's bumpier you make the line tighter if you have a lunge there. It makes the right-hander hard work. Probably almost got to do a curb hop to get down the inside. So that spot there, to get a run, almost got a straight line. At Father and son, Stephen Johnson and Dick Johnson watching at Shell V Power Racing. We've become accustomed over the years, many years. You have great contests with DJ back in the day when the cars were painted in similar livery. And so uh, this is a great reunification of a couple of big names. Now, here's David Reynolds serving that penalty, sadly. It's a millimetre perfect requirement down there at Turn 2, unfortunately, and it's a very difficult thing to get right lap after lap, particularly as you begin to lose tyre grip and focus because the mental application required at the back end of the race also becomes a, a real uphill battle. This is Tim Blanchard here in car number 21 for Team Cool Drive. Back with the Brad Jones Racing squad again this year. This is his ninth race at the Clipsal 500. He too has a great finishing record here. He's come home every time, 100% of the time. Back in 2008, ooh, that tyre's chattering on the road, therefore in the turn seven. His best result, he came home just outside the top 10 in the 11th. Right at the moment, he's running in 19th position. It's 54 seconds from the lead. And uh, on the other side of him, he's got David Reynolds as a result of that penalty just in front. He's got Simona Di Silvestro behind him in the Nissan Altima. The only car that's able to stay in the 21s is Shane Van Gisberg. And again on that lap, extended the lead by about another 
six tenths of a second. 11.95, now almost 12 seconds ahead of Fabian Coulthard. Everybody else is in the mid-22s. That was John Blanchard Sr., grandfather. Yeah, the uh, pace at the back end of the race for Van Gisbergen has been really impressive. Not just the strategy down there at Red Bull, but just sheer pace when it counted. I'm intrigued to see whether or not this one stays as it is or whether or not it builds up to a big crescendo. Nine laps remaining. I think he's just uh, dropped back off a little bit. Variety believe he has no radio, so he might not get told about you coming. He's just dropped off him a little bit. He only three or four car lengths back. And you just do that sometimes just to get some cool air, recover yourself, get the brake temperatures back in, in order, because everything gets hot. The engine gets hot. The air temperature for... Everything coming in the front of the car gets the heat soak from that lead car. And there's the field for you. There's Waters, Kelly, Lowndes, Winkup. There's Percat. Mostert has recovered reasonably well after all those dramas. It starts up to ninth. Moffat, Caruso, Tander, Holdsworth. And this is a great way of seeing where your favourite driver is. Slade, Winterbottom. There's Scott Pye. Scott McLaughlin, who's had a pretty ordinary day, so is this young man, Dave Reynolds, who was going quite well. He was hovering around the back of the top ten. He was actually in 12th before that drive-through. Blanchard is 19th. Here's Simona, who you've just got to dip your lid and say what a great job for the weekend that she's done because this has been a very tough assignment. That was Taz Douglas, but he's actually out of order because he was in the pit for a little while. Here's Alex Rulo, Jason Bright, and then back to our leader again. So we're just talking about pace, and on that lap, another 21.95 for Shane Van Giersberg, an extraordinary pace. He's got to back it off now. You don't need to be trying that hard. Rusty, just out at Erebus Motorsport, wanted to get a quick update firstly on, uh, on Dale Wood with team boss Barry Ryan. How's Dale? It does, Ryan, yeah. We, unfortunately, we had a gearbox mount break. He got out of the car. He's pretty hot, like everybody is, but, yeah, he's fine. When I walked in here, I sensed that you weren't 100% happy, and even Betty Clemenko's not 100% happy. Just explain why. Yeah, like, the Jujutsu Jiu Systems had a big overview, and, you know, they, they don't want to do drive-through penalties. And we've just copped a drive-through penalty in the hardest race of the year for overuse of curves. We saw the current, well, sorry, a multiple champion turn someone around He's got no penalty. So it's just not fair in a race like this. I don't think the play on thing should happen is what they want. So a drive through for overuse of Kurt is just not right. Move it to it. 12.2 seconds is the gap now, Van Gisbergen to Coulthard. There's their man, David Reynolds. Pen right on the car again, and they've got some Ryko backing also for this weekend. Here's Alex Rulo. Got it, I've got it. And uh, Jason Bright having a battle. It suggests there might be something on the road back there at the moment. That was uh, pretty wild for both of those guys. Remember that uh, got overlooked a bit in uh, all the drama of Bathurst last year, but David and Erebus came away with a lap record at Mount Panorama as well, which was a fantastic performance. Certainly, their speed from Bathurst onwards was impressive. And here's shot for that magnificent chicane at turn one two three and the run up wakefield street to turn four through this 90 degree section five six and then when you turn back the other direction at turn seven headed through the parklands and up to turn eight lots of different lines there you see cam waters Overshot the exit curb, ran very wide. There's concert venue there on the right hand side, and there's the overuse of curb also for Chas Mostert. So he'll have to be careful in the closing laps not to be caught. There's into turn nine and into the back of the pit area on your right. We're on board Red Rooster Chopper Cam. Having a look at what is a composite circuit. It's a hybrid track, one end to permanent parklands layout. The rest is the northern end. Is a very traditional 
street circuit layouts. The final corner, roughly 65 kilometres an hour. And there's the bad sportsmanship flag being displayed to Chas Mostert. We'll work out for you later on as to how many of those guys have either had that shown to them or they've had to do a tour at the pit lane. There's another one now, car 17 at Scott McLaughlin. So you don't need a drive through at that point of the race. Scott McLaughlin is in 17th position. It's Todd Kelly with more material hanging off the back of the Altima. Yeah, they put race tape on it last time, but obviously hasn't held it sufficiently. I understand there's been 10 bad sportsmanship flags so far for curb overuse down at turn two. Thanks for filling that gap in for me. I started the story, I can always rely on well, you. finished mine yesterday with percentages <laughs> when we were doing a maths exercise, so I felt like I should return serve in a nice way. <laughs> Thank you. Now this pressure between these two has just eased a little bit, hasn't it, in the recent past? The battle between Coulthard and Courtney. Spare a thought for these guys. They have been at it now for a very large chunk of time. We've been racing for one hour, 44 minutes and 15 seconds. A long time out there. The car's starting to slip and slide off the edge of the road. That's why they're falling off curbs, rubbing walls, tripping over the curb warning at turn two. It's that end of the day. The speed of Van Gisbergen is telling. One minute, 21.8. Everybody else is in the mid to low. 22s on that lap 74. This is going to be a very big result for Red Bull. Big statement. A lot of brinksmanship out there between these teams and drivers. Making a big statement at the start of the year is important. It's amazing how the phases of the race work, isn't it? Because if you stop the race at the halfway point, you said, OK, we're all over at lap 40. DJ Team Penske and the Mobile One HSV racing team would have said, our cars aren't too bad, we're pretty close to Van Gisbergen because they battled pretty hard all three teams in the early stages. But in the closing sector of the race, Van Gisbergen has just absolutely smashed them. 14 seconds is the gap yeah. now. Yeah, so so that's not all about strategy. No, the critical, from the critical point of the chequered flag, the car 97, just been in another zone. It's interesting. Done the same now. Another 21.8 plays a 22.47 and a 22.47. Incredible consistency. So just roll those out one after the other is amazing. So Courtney's put the white flag up. Yeah, yeah. Since that in the last couple of laps, wondered whether or not it was a rest or whether that's it. Meantime, there's still some pretty hefty battles going on down the field. This is teammates Craig Lowndes and Jamie Wincup. These fellas are battling for 6th and 7th at the moment. They're about 24 seconds off the money. So interesting to your last comment. So what's Van Gisbergen got in place, set up and understanding in that car that these fellas don't have? He comes oh. Jamie down the inside. He's got right away. Craig backs out of it and gives him space. And that is Wink up, up into sixth place. And Percat will have a piece of this as well. He's right on him. Close cluster of cars there. Now we jump into Nick Percat's car at turn 11, back to second gear here. So he's tucked in behind the rear wing of Lowndes. So key to get more points in Jamie Wincup's recovery today. Every position counts. Super Slow Mo's uh, Simona Di Silvestro at one. She's grabbing a bit of the tyre bundle here and it's ripped the composite guard off. But I made mention of before that it's on the front and the rear of these cars. And uh, that's, she'll get home, but there's bits everywhere. We'll be super careful through eight because it's not going to turn or steer terribly well. Headlight is the worry there. Race controller in my ear as I speak, monitoring the situation. So all that from just clouding the tyres down there at one. Frank Adamson from Supercars just said he, in his opinion, it's okay to get to the end. I think the guard's actually okay, but I was concerned about the, the 
the headlight. headlight or the plastic structure. Here we go, down the inside comes Perkat on Lowndes. So that's another vital spot for Nick Perkat up to seventh. So Lowndes is struggling right at the back end. Looks like a straight line speed issue for Winkup to pass him in the same spot. One more, mate, one more. Gap is 15 seconds behind. So, and we'll find out post race. And when we wrap all this up as to what the issue is for Craig Lowndes. So here we go, last lap now for Shane Van Gisbergen. What an impressive run it's been. His performance in the top 10 shootout was extreme. His battle yesterday in qualifying was absolutely fantastic. He's got a margin, believe it or not, when we talk about these tiny, crazy margins, he's got a gap of 15 seconds coming up to almost two hours of racing. And that's a rarity in this business. Last time out, he was the winner on the streets of Sydney Olympic Park and in the process claimed the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. This will move him on to 20 career wins. It's another big win for Holm, the 99th for this model. And we're on board as he gasses up and slides it. He's going to kill those rear tyres. He's also the burnout master. He's relaxed. He's done quite a bit of off-season racing. He spent a couple of weeks in New Zealand. He's refreshed, re-energised. And as he negotiates the final corner of race one, Shane Van Gisbergen makes a very big statement to commence 2017. Brilliant work today. Uh, not a heap of fuel for a burnout, but I still want to see you best on these new tyres. Brad McPherson, the engineer, wants to see a burnout. Home by 14.8 seconds from Fabian Coulthard. There he is. Tremendous well performance. James Courtney, position three. And how about Cam Waters? Thumbs up to Cam. Beautiful drive from Rick Kelly. Jamie Wincup chased him hard all the way home from Nick Perkett and Craig Lowndes. And here's the Giz. Well, what an emphatic way to start your championship campaign for the young New Zealander. He's 27 years of age. Did not make a mistake. Last phase of this race was superb. Fastest car on the track by a mile. Almost 15 second gap to Fabian Coulthard and James Courtney. Not just faster than Fabian and James, but demonstrably faster than his own Everybody. teammates as well. Everybody, including Wink Cup and Lowndes. And I think what we saw today in the top 10 shootout showed the way that Van Gisbergen is going to approach this championship. Never seen him so animated. It was an unbelievable lap. He had to throw everything at it to eclipse the time of Fabian Coulthard. And this is the finish right against the fence. It's one of the only finishes in Australian racing where you can hear in the amphitheatre that all the people in the grandstand opposite the pit and all the people above the pit buildings, you can hear the crowd over the car and the engines and he will be absolutely wrapped to have that finish for everybody as the first win for what is now the new Holden Racing Team. And 150 points. Absolutely. Maximum score to get things started. Pick up where he left off. We'll have a look at the results for you and it'll confirm that just under 15 seconds was the margin between Shane Van Gisbergen and his compatriot Fabian Coulthard. So Kiwi drivers one and two. James Courtney in the end didn't have a response for Coulthard but on the podium. Great drive. Cam Waters also a wonderful performance in position number four from Rick Kelly. Fought hard all day. Lots of points and lots to cheer about in the Nissan Motorsport camp. Win Cup, Percat, Lowndes, Mostert, then Moffat just outside the top ten. Michael Caruso, Garth Tander, Lee Holdsworth, Slade, Winterbottom and that investigation to come on Win Cup and Winterbottom after the race. And one or two tough stories. Punctures for Todd Kelly. A failed cool suit and comms problems for Jason Bright. But right now, it is all about Shane Van Gisbergen. Big crowd. Huge passion in Adelaide for supercar racing. And Shane has come home. Position number one again. And Adelaide's turned on another ripping day for us. Shane 
Dan Gisbergen is the man, 27 years of age. I asked him earlier in the week, how do you top a brilliant 2016 that included the championship win, the Pertec Enduro Cup, a great 12-hour performance and winning in Europe in GT. Well, there's the answer. Start winning again in 17. That was his dad, Robert. And he looks to be in pretty good nick. So he's pulled up strongly. Lots of things for us to follow through this evening in preparation for tomorrow's telecast to try and understand all of the tales of woe, who's going to adjust what, what needs fixing, and one or two things to resolve in the judiciary as well. So Van Gisbergen, as Mark Scaife said just a little earlier, his performance after the critical lap to the flag was absolutely outstanding. Shane Van Gisbergen, congratulations. What a dominant display of performance for your day here, defending your title as the champion and as the new team of the Factory Holden squad. Yeah, what a great first day as uh, Red Bull Holden Racing Team. Thanks, everyone. What a great crowd today. Thanks for coming out. Awesome race, very tough at the start, but uh, yeah, we uh, pushed on at the end, got to the front, great strategy, and yeah, hopefully we can do it again tomorrow. Thanks. Were you aware towards the end of the gap that you had in almost 15 seconds? Yeah, I could have backed off, but I really wanted to know how these tyres will last, but unfortunately we won't have any data, I smoked them up, but anyway. <laughs> Enjoy that first podium. Fabian Coulthard, you had to work for it today, hot, hard work, and James Corny certainly didn't let, it, uh, let you rest. No, I certainly had James breathing down my neck pretty much the whole race, but, you know, the uh, AAA car's pretty fast, so we've got a little bit of work to do, but, you know, like we said from the get-go, we've got a, a small mountain to climb and we'll go at our own pace, but, you know, thanks to everybody back at work, you know, ladies and, and gentlemen um, back at work. So they're the ones that have done massive hours, and, uh, you know, I'm thankful that I can stand here because of them. Enjoy that first podium for season 2017. James Courtney, the first podium for you in the new era of the HSV racing team. Yeah, mobile one HSV racing team, but uh, not even team on the end, just racing. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, would have loved it first. We were running second for a while there, but uh, Cheese was just class of his own today. Had plenty of speed on board, and, and uh, those guys did a great job. I was uh, pressuring Babs all the way to the end and uh, hoping to make a mistake. A couple of little ones, but nothing big enough for us to get past. But uh, front tire tent was through the roof, so we're just a passenger hoping for something to happen. But yeah, like you said, Rihanna, great, uh, great start to the season. Good bag of points. The guys did a great job, so uh, we'll polish her up, see what happens tomorrow. Enjoy the celebrations, Jesse. Yeah, thank you. Simona Di Silvestro, your first 250k race in a supercar in Adelaide in 30 degree heat. You look really good at the way you've jumped out of there. How tough was it? Yeah, it was okay, actually. The heat w was okay. It's just really getting the rhythm down in the car and stuff like that. It was kind of cool in the beginning of the race because we were around cars and kind of fighting a little bit so that was really good and really enjoyed that and uh, I think the pace you know can be a little bit better but uh, the car was really good and I think for our first one we'll take it you know it's uh, we finished it learned a lot during the race uh, made a few mistakes in the pits so uh, you know it will be better tomorrow. You should be very proud of that uh, first ever brilliant times are very consistent and only that one little blemish towards the end with the front but how do you feel physically? Uh, it's okay actually like, I think because everybody freaked me out so much about it that uh, you know I had this in my mind so it's actually okay you know and one, once you're out there and you're having your rhythm it's kind of okay for sure but uh, yeah it is a long race and it's, it's it is pretty hot yeah very well done thank you it was brilliantly done wasn't it she's finished in 20th position her third supercar race the 28 year old Swiss she can be proud of that one and uh, to get through that and perform as she did is a proud achievement that team Harvey Norman Nissan Altima so fantastic day of racing Shane Van Gisbergen getting home by 14.7 seconds from Fabian Coulthard and James Courtney can't say enough about the performance of Cam Waters let's get back downstairs absolutely uh, Cromley you can't say enough about uh, the performance of young Cam Waters and the Monster Energy Power A Falcon that was a great drive a lot of pressure <laughs> yeah, it was um yeah, I'm just wrapped to be honest. I was just excited to try and get in the top 10 and to come home fourth. That's, yeah, absolutely awesome. So, um, yeah, Rick was putting a lot of pressure on me at the end, but just uh, kept hitting my markers. And um, the car has really good tyre life, but I think the outright pace probably isn't quite there. So. Yeah, consistently, consistency looked really good. You're able to sort of maintain pretty good pace all the way through. Were you, were you sort of waiting for it to go away? Yeah, it was funny. Would um, mine would go away a little bit, then he'd catch me, and then his would go away. So it was a bit of a seesaw through the race, but... Um, yeah, kind of dropped off and it was pretty consistent, so 
yeah, I'm happy, just super happy to get a fourth and get some points today. And um, yeah, we can work with that. Yeah, great start to work with tomorrow. Good luck, mate. So, thanks, buddy. Well done, Cameron Waters, Monster Energy, Ford Falcon, a big bag of points, position number four. Time now for the podium. What an afternoon and what a way to start the 2017 championship. Time for the top three to make their way up for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, Clipsal 500, race one of the season. In first place from Red Bull Racing Australia, give it up for Shane Van Gisbergen. Second position today from Shell V Power Racing, Fabian Coulthard. And from Mobile One HSV Racing, third place, James Courtney. Representing our winning team from Red Bull Racing Australia, Grant McPherson. Our third place trophy to be delivered by, the, uh, by Mr. Brad Wright, Retail Director, Clipsal by Schneider Electric. Our second place trophy, courtesy of Mr. Ray Dunn, Vice President, Schneider Electric, New Zealand. The winning team trophy, courtesy of the Honourable Leon Bignall, Minister for Motorsport. And our winner's trophy this afternoon, courtesy of Ms. Lisa Vlahos, MP and Minister for Disabilities. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Clipsal 500 Saturday podium. Time now for the celebrations. Well done, Shane Van Gisbergen, Fabian Coulthard, Grant McPherson's up there as well to celebrate. There's the points, bottom left-hand corner of screen. And it's a 12-point margin between Van Gisbergen and Coulthard. Courtney in third position from Cam Waters. And interesting to contemplate that pending the outcome of what happens with tonight's hearing, Wind Cup currently sixth and Scotty McLaughlin down in 17th and uh, Mark Winterbottom in 15th. It's going to be fascinating to contemplate how all these guys recover overnight and play the game again tomorrow. Well caught. Great start for Shelby Power Racing. I didn't really know what was going on. At what moment did this start to hit you? Well, I've got to say, I firstly apologise for everyone at home that has to see this, but no, look, it's just information I don't need. The first three, there's no point my engineer telling me that on the radio. We're focused on our job that whole time out there. And to be honest, this is just about cooling the core temperature down as quickly as we can because we've got to repeat exactly that tomorrow. And towards the end of the race, the last 10 or 15 laps, I think everyone would have been feeling it out there. So just trying to prepare myself as good as I can for tomorrow. But, yeah, it was a really interesting race. To move forward from eighth to fifth for us is fantastic. I think if we had been in second, we probably had the pace to stay there. So I've got to qualify better. You're a fit bloke. You've been through this scenario before. Just run us through what happens when you're in the cockpit when heat stress starts, starts to, uh, I guess, take a little bit of a hold. It didn't smash you around completely. You made it to the end of the race. But what starts to bother you? You start to just drive the car more off rhythm than, than anything else. You, you, your brain starts to slow up a little bit more. You stop thinking about what you can do to adjust the car and just driving by rhythm. But um, yeah, it could have been a little bit longer, the race, for me, without us really struggling. I think you know a few people towards the end would have been feeling it, especially in the feet. You know, The pedal box is very, very hot. And so for me, that's uh, the biggest thing. I think I'll be limping around for a week or so after this. Don't worry, folks. He's got board shorts on underneath this ice pack that he's got going here. So suitably attired. Best of luck tomorrow, mate. We'll check in tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Howie. Thanks, Matty. I'm down here with the race winner who is on his way to the ice bath. So uh, that's the first thing you said to me, Shane. Straight to the ice bath for you. We'll come in here out of the way. Uh, congratulations, mate. Just an awesome, awesome drive. That was one of the more dominant performances we've seen. Yeah, the start wasn't so good. I um, struggled to get the tyres. Fabian pulled a pretty nice move and... Yeah, once the tyres come up, the pace was really good. We just struggled with the strategy to get back in front, but once we did, the car was amazing. Like, click of bias, click of roll bar, you'd feel it really in the window, so great job. How were you feeling in the car? Because we've seen some of the guys almost peeling themselves out. You're obviously a very fit man, but it can't have been easy. Yeah, um, it was tough. Um, pretty race fit. I uh, don't train much out of the car, so I'm pretty knackered, but felt good driving, but now the heat's just whacked me. I'm, I'm stuffed. Were you surprised by the gap? 15 seconds, that's, uh, that's credit to you and your team. Yeah. I, wasn't, I don't know. Uh, we didn't really know what pace we'd have. It came evident in the first stint that we had great tyre life, so we made the most of that. The last stint, we pitted earlier than we thought, but, yeah, once I was clear, the tyre life was amazing. And what we let you go, mate. Uh, all that work, all that effort, you're knackered, but you still had a bit for the burnout, which I always appreciate. Yeah. I ran out of gas, otherwise I would have kept going, but 
Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, we probably should have got some tyre data from that, but yeah, had to have some fun. Congratulations, rest up. We'll see you tomorrow, Shane. Thank you. Mark Howard said the words there. That was a dominant victory by Shane Van Gisbergen and the Red Bull Holden Racing Team. There's been a lot of talk in the build-up to this, and it occurred throughout qualifying in the shootout that Red Bull Holden Racing Team is going to have a big challenge from DJR Team Penske, and that's how it played out. So that's a big marker in the sand from the championship winning team already. A couple of takeouts, I think, Matt, from this race. Firstly, Shane has telegraphed a punch to his teammate, most importantly, I think, Jamie Winkup. And isn't it funny, it all comes back to qualifying. You have to qualify in front of your teammate. Jamie was severely compromised because when they thought maybe they were going to get a safety car on lap one, in comes Jamie on what is the compromise strategy. So his day is kind of ruined against his teammate. So we'll roll up again tomorrow and it'll be very much about strategy in qualifying. But it will also be about what we just saw with Rick Kelly, getting on top of this physical recuperation period because over the last couple of years they've done the two 125k races on this day and then the big one tomorrow but they've done a big one already so it's back to the old days. You were there in those days. How tough is it to get back to the hotel tonight and somehow get your body and mind right for what you know is going to hit you tomorrow? It's still going to be hot. Goes without saying, Matt, they built them a hell of a lot tougher back in the day. I mean, you've said that before. Look, but I, I think no better indication how tough than Dar Wood. We saw him, you know, struggling to make common, you know, good good sense. Uh, Rick said it there. You, you start to lose the ability to do the, the micro thinking. You know, the little bits and pieces, little adjustments in your car. Turn in here, brake there, adjust the anti-robber. You let that go, drive by rhythm, and that's not the way forward. Simone, you saw the little mistake at the end. We see that at the end. That'll be as a result of, of, of dehydration. It's just that much harder tomorrow because you've got to get the fluids back in tonight and have another hit. So the man who finished 2016 as the series champion starts...